Shalom, shalom. Greetings, everyone. Blessings. Yeah, there's no sounds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shalom, shalom. There we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, brother Jeremy, let me know that I have the audio. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, 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 like I said, I was trying to say, and I thought you were all hearing me. Uh, greetings to you all. Blessings to you all. It's good to be here with you fellas tonight. Um, every time that I set up this, this, this computer, my setup, uh, there's always something that needs to be adjusted. And earlier I was having issues with audio going through to the stream. And, um, I definitely had to troubleshoot that before I can actually get started this evening. And, uh, yeah, so that technical difficulties, um, the, the blessings of the day of small things, uh, Shalom, brother Aki Manilo. Uh, shalom, shalom. Blessings to you, brother. Glad to see you here with us tonight. And uh, yes, he sent the greetings earlier before we went live. Uh, SWR or uh, shalom to you. Blessings to you. Good to see you tonight. And we have uh, Charles Civils. Yes, blessings to you. Shalom, brother. Good to see you tonight. Glad you're here with us, streaming with us tonight. We look forward to tonight's stream. Looking forward to having some fun tonight. Uh, as we dig into this topic tonight, a uh, topic that uh, I'm assuming uh, that most that will be tuning in is you haven't heard about it. Uh, this is not your first time of hearing about it, rather. But um, nevertheless, um, you know, I, I believe that we're going to have fun with this tonight. I'm giving the brothers time to get in. I see we got a few people in the chat room, uh, which is good, which is good. That's a good thing. And while you're in the chat room, definitely. Hit the like button. Um, um, blessings to you all. I uh, hope you all had a blessed day today. Uh, this this is the second day of the week for us as Israelites. Uh, here we go. Shalom, brother Jay. Blessings to you. I don't know if your mic is on. Shalom. Sorry about that. I'm shalom, shalom. You're down low. Can you turn things. it up some? Yeah. yeah, hold on. Okay. Yeah. No. How's no. That? You sound How's good. That? No. You sound good. You said no. You're good. You're good. You're good. Okay. You're good. I actually was turned down low <laughs> when I went to oh. when I went to troubleshoot. I actually uh, turned the, the sound down. I don't know for some reason. But in any event, we're here. Blessings. Blessings. I'm glad to be here tonight. Uh, we're waiting on Brother D. He'll be uh, logging in with us soon. I'll give him some time. So. Um, how's it going? How's how's everything, brother Jeremy? He probably stepped away again. It's, it's <laughs> going pretty good. I'm having some technical difficulties over here. It's so weird. Really? I swear it's so weird. Yeah. I, I, th I think that just lets us know how important this message is going to be tonight. I, I think so. I think so. Because we can't talk about biblical masculinity like, without the subject like of confidence. You, you oh you got a delay so you hear me Absolutely. in a delay huh you hear me in a delay yeah you hear me in a delay okay yeah I it's don't like know what that is you delay and then it starts freezing on your end but I know it's got to be my connection okay okay and 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 you don't have a hard wire you're wireless right let see now it's frozen. Okay, uh, bear with me, brother Mike. I'm a switch connection is going to drop me, and I'm coming right back. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Yes. Uh, those of you last night, um, if you got an opportunity, if you haven't, um, definitely I encourage you to check out the stream. And those of you that were on the stream, how many of you in the chat room were on the stream last night? Um, when we were streaming with uh, Brother Pete, Brother Jeremy, Dr. Yonatan, Baruch, and we had a later on uh, surprise uh, guest of Brother Rufus. Pastor Rufus came on the stream later on last night talking about uh, Torah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, Aki says, Aki Manolo says, that was a great stream last night. Yeah, I, I, we definitely, it, it, we, would, we were saying that it, you know, it took like three and a half hours to stream, and it didn't even feel like it. It really didn't even feel like it. Um, I think the the spirit, the 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 move of the ruach and the, the, its anointing definitely was high to the point where 
you know, we were on this drive and just didn't even feel it, man. Just didn't even feel it, man. It was so great. Yeah, he figures that's the, the, the one I'd miss. Yeah, it was it was great, but you know the good thing is is that you can go um SWR back to the um to the on the channel and just click the live tab and you can definitely see the full stream. I mean, it was really great. Um, we definitely covered a lot of ground last night, and he said definitely watching that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's it was a good it was a good stream. Uh, brother Hebrew, shalom, brother. Hold on a second, shalom, brother. Hebrew rapaholic, blessings to you, brother. Good to see you, man. Good to see you tonight, and good to see you. Uh, blessings. I know, I know you are uh, an, an hour ahead, and you'll be preparing uh, for work for tomorrow. But it's good to see you here and on the stream tonight. And uh, definitely, what I was able to catch, uh, I enjoyed your stream on yesterday. Okay, brother Jeremy is coming in in the backstage. All right, shalom, brother. Can you hear me? Shalom, shalom. How's it going? Am I clear? It sounds good. Do you hear the delay still? Nope, nope. Okay, sounds good. Okay, okay. so all right, good. So we got we got juice. We got connection. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Sorry about that. But yeah, man. I uh, do that stream. You got that stream. Stream you guys did yesterday, man. It put everything in perspective. I I, I appreciate yeah. you guys for doing that. And then you guys had a special guest come on too, which, which was special a guest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, Pastor Rufus, brother Rufus came on and um. You know, definitely uh, when he had some questions and we were able to help minister with the questions last night. So it was really it was really good. It was really good to see. You know, you could definitely see uh, the father really working through him like you can see him being restored um, from being within uh, straightway to making his video. Um, putting it out there um, oh, because yeah. he had just gotten thrown out of the ministry, and he he and then brother uh, Elder Brent making that that video, and then you know all of the different appearances of him being on Ringo and you know then being on a Floridian, uh, Rallo, and you know being on these different streams and the different different videos that he's made, and then this morning I saw a release. I don't know if you guys saw it this morning. But he, yeah, he released yeah. another video this morning, you know, actually um, making an apology, being transparent, being open, you know, which is which is a blessing to was a blessing to see this morning because you know I I know what it is to come out of an a cult like ministry. I know. Yeah. I mean, I, I was in one in Christianity, and you know, people that are on the inside of a movement like that there this is things that you just don't see that people on the outside can see absolutely and it's and it's when you remove yourself is when you get to see um how blind you were you get oh, to yeah. see how much you were off and how it takes a little time yeah 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 the scales start coming off kind of like you know what we see with the apostle paul well he well, he was saul on his way to damascus mm -hmm. um i believe it's in um uh, uh, acts 9 acts 8 acts 9 and you know when he's blinded you know by the presence of the messiah and he has these scales on his eyes for three days so it took him a while to actually receive the healing you know um from the of having the scales removed from his eyes and that's really what happens when 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 one steps out of a movement that is so strongly uh counter to scripture and and is influenced demonically it has a control it has a stronghold it has a a, a chain around a person's mind that it it inhibits you from being able to see clearly seeing the truth in the way that it ought to see you know and you're so focused through the lens of the doctrine of that movement that you really can't see that what you've embraced or what you're embracing or what you're endeavoring is false and it mm -hmm. takes removing yourself from it and and it takes some time before you can really start seeing like you know, 
Yeah, but it, it's a blessing to see where he's at right now, man. This really is. It is, man. You, you you truly see the you truly see that repentant spirit on him, and but you also see a humble spirit because it, it does takes a humble spirit, which the scriptures tell us that we should have in this walk to come and right. say, hey, you know what? I messed up, and I have to apologize. I have to make right. that right. 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 And, um, it, right. It, man, it it did. It's it's beautiful to see, and that, that's what we're seeing right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and he said like when he first made his video, it came out in the open of what happened, what transpired between him and and Straightway and Fashion Dow. Um, his thing was that he wanted restoration, and the very thing that he said that he wanted, you know, you can see him actually, you know, verbalizing it because you know once you get into the realm of acknowledging your sin, you get into the realm of extending apologies ex mm -hmm. you know ex seeking to make amends to restore to repair the damage you know now you're walking in restoration you know absolutely and and at that point you begin to see things that you could not see you, you, you could not see you know and it, it's it's amazing brother hebrew says you wanted to be true so badly that you miss what is right in front of you that is so true like yeah. the truth is right, right in front of you but you can't even you can't even uh, let alone see it nor appreciate it for what it really is i, I think yeah, you know, it um mm. it, it it reminds me of um of being of when the of when the israelites were, eat, were ambushed coming out of egypt like at mm -hmm. that point you know we get to a point where okay now we're in this thing and we want to come to truth and it's right. almost like we get ambushed, you know, by all these different tribes to come join them yes. because what yes. they believe is right. And, yes. Um, yes. It's, yes. It, it, it's very damaging. It's very damaging yes. because we we believe because we're not we're not taught, you know. Mm -hmm. We don't really mm -hmm. understand the word, and we don't understand seeking Him first, like the Bible says. Yes. That um th that that we get lost because we believe what we're doing is right. So. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, definitely I'm so glad so glad to see this restoration yes right here. yes yes it's a it's a, it's a beautiful it's a, i mean isn't that what the gospel is all about you know yes. what i'm saying it's about <laughs> totally. restoration you know cold israel that's what it's all about man that's what it's all about and it's, it's just such a blessing to be able to see the brother at, at this place at this juncture you know um because it definitely takes humility that's that's another factor. And by the way, shalom, brother Derek. <laughs> yeah, we saw oh, yeah, shalom, brother, yeah, shalom, brother, shalom, brother. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt. I'm listening. There's no problem. <laughs> yeah, we, okay. We're so engrossed in the conversation, man. We it's okay. Right. <laughs> no problem. No problem, brothers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, man. So, yeah, yeah, that's it, man. Um, yeah, so yeah. Anything else you wanted to add on that, brother Jay? That you, you know, anything that stood out last uh, night? What what really stood out to me, and uh, again, I appreciate you, Brother Pete, uh, Brother Jan, and uh, the the original Jeremy of the group, um, <laughs> getting, getting on, and uh, it was the land, you know, how patriarchy is tantamount to land ownership, and, and, and that's yeah. really the, that's really what sets the family, right? owning land, right. and not only having that inheritance, but having a place where they can always go, because I, I rewatched it again earlier and i'm gonna rewatch it again tomorrow i could uh study something else tonight but yeah yeah you guys were speaking about how it how even the grandfather is still the patriarchy or the head over the family you know yeah he tells the, everyone he direction. tells everyone he tells everyone what to do yeah 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 and you know yeah. he sets it up and and he's and and just just that in itself is like dang all that doggone wisdom like that's a a lifetime of wisdom that two other generations have access to and then it'll be three mm -hmm. and they'll start having kids and it's like wow like the, the yeah. father really is magnificent yes and uh and yes. how he sets up and orchestrates it yes and and you and you see why the enemy fights against the male presence he wants to remove the male headship he wants to move, oh, yeah. remove the male authority because it keeps so much intact. You know, the mm -hmm. whole, the whole, the whole construct of a, of a clan, of a tribe, of a land ownership is a liturgy. It is designed to be a, a liturgy of worship. You know, like you, 
you're in a, a, a service and you have a program, or let's just say you're doing uh, past, uh, Pesach uh, Seder, uh, Passover Seder, um, you know, there's a liturgy, you know, that is being followed. There's a program. And there's different things that's done and throughout the night of that dinner. And there are different things that are on the table, that's on the plate, right? There's different right. things that are said, right? And all of those things are parts and pieces of an overall liturgy, which is a worship, which is a worship. And so when you remove the people from the, it, it reminds me of, and I don't want to sound corny, it reminds me of the movie Avatar. And how, you know, the people were, the blue people, they were so, the Navi people were so connected to the land. Mm -hmm. And and how being connected to the land kept them connected to the spiritual realm. And a lot of times, I touched on this in that, that, that video that I did on Four Types of Grounds, um, that we come from the land. We come from the soil. We're yeah. made yeah. of the soil, right? So there's an intimate intricate uh part interconnecting part uh a union that we have with the ground that 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 ties into our ability to be able to worship you know and so to have that severed to have a monarch system a dictatorship system mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, some type of socialistic system right that comes and intervenes and interferes with or some cult or some religious system that interferes with that, it disrupts the order of the, the larger scale liturgy of worship that's supposed to be to our creator. Absolutely. It's beautiful, man. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it's it, beautiful. It, it disconnects us, man. And mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. what you what you brother said and said and demonstrated was the uh, was the missing link to a lot of families. And now people what 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 primarily the matriarchy is gonna have to do. Is they're going to have right. to put aside their they're going to put aside their grievances, right? And um, right. and and come back to reestablish that chain and link, so the family, right. the entire family, can return back to the father. Because exactly. I, you know, I, I hear it all the time in the manosphere, man, that uh, the men haven't left the table, and in most cases, right. it's true they haven't left the table. They're just waiting for the other part to come back. And just simply apologize, and and a lot of and a lot of that will reconnect the woman back to the man, as well as the kids back to the man, and then they can reconnect to the father, because his orders never change. Yes, yes, and I believe it's why Paul says that he wants every man everywhere to lift up holy hands, you know, without grumbling, without dispute, you know, lift up holy hands, because it starts when men, um. Is you know, like you said, you know, we're waiting for the other side, meaning um, our counterparts, our helpmates, right, to come in a line and assimilate. Well, the Messiah is waiting for us as men to uh, fall in line and to assimilate, right. you know, yeah, yeah. and 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 so when all of that is, everything is every joint and every part, every member is where it's supposed to be. It's a beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. That, that's why I enjoy watching Brother Pete's channel, man. Like uh, Brother Pete's channel, and and I, and I and I do watch some of your some of your older stuff as well. Um, because you you can't help but see proper positioning in you guys' channel, and uh, and, and even and even Brother Rufus' channel. You can't help but see you guys are in order, you know, with the Messiah, and, and how you guys are walking um despite challenges the first thing that you guys do is you always take it back to her keep that in, in the forefront of everything that you guys do and and it's just shown in in your videos and the work that you guys put in so thank you brother so y'all be the praise man yes y'all be the praise man y'all be the praise that's that's the strength <laughs> it's him <laughs> definitely congrats on the um on the special yeah. you did yeah definitely i haven't finished watching it but um it, um, the soap, the, the at least uh, enough of what I checked out is really good, really solid with Pete and the brothers there. Yeah, I think it's enough to watch for the whole week, man. 
<laughs> it's oh, three yeah. and a half hours. <laughs> That's it. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna man, be, be on my third watch part. tomorrow. You can break, yeah, you can break it up in parts, man. Definitely, definitely breaking it apart. But it was a lot of fun doing it, though. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely, and definitely not much needed for 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 the people, for the for the nation. You know, much needed, much needed. But for we this, got another uh, topic to. Bro- yeah, what you said, brother. No, I was just saying for this daytime and hour. Yeah, you're right. You're right, much needed. Yeah, for this, yes, definitely, definitely. So, brother D, how's everything going with you, brother? Everything yeah, is good. Doing good, doing good. Like I said, I was just checking out your um your stuff. I haven't finished the whole thing, but so far from what I, I was like, wow, this is real solid, man. This is good. Seeing this special, this special is really good. From what I've seen, yeah. I can't finish. Can't wait to finish the rest of it. You know. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. nothing. Like I haven't. Like yeah, that, I haven't. I haven't stuff. looked at it like some. You yeah. got what you said. It's Say definitely it something you can watch um a few times more, not just like once, because it's so much information. It's a you lot, know? a lot of. I mean, a lot of, a lot of. And actually, Doctor Yan actually um orchestrated that. You know, um, with the articles and so forth and whatnot, where he's been on that for some months, and he put all of that together. You know, he he calls them seven school stones. <laughs> Each yeah. article represents a stone. Yeah. So, but um, but yeah, man, power pack, a lot of information, a lot of yeah. information, a lot of information. Yeah, 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 a lot of information. So I'm blessed. Um, and I'm um, looking forward to tonight's discussion. So, um, to the brothers in the chat rooms, blessings to you all. Uh, definitely, I want to say these are. I said it a little bit earlier. You coming in definitely do hit the like button share the link uh definitely if you never subscribe do subscribe to the channel um as we move forward and we proceed tonight and um looking forward to the topic tonight it's a good talk and i want to welcome everyone to masculinity monday and so tonight's topic we're gonna announce it in a minute and uh we're gonna ask uh brother derek if he'd be so kind to open us up with a word of prayer Okay, thank you, Lord, for bringing all the brothers back together to speak your word, to have the discussion with the panel of the brothers, the ones who are listening, and also the ones who will listen the way after, that we're able to discuss your word, share your word, and learn and edify by it. In your name we pray, amen. Amen, 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 amen. All righty, all righty. So tonight's topic, what we're going to be talking about here tonight, we're going to be talking about a topic that was suggested to me by Brother Manilo. Brother, Brother Manilo made this suggestion last week. And I said, hey, that sounds like a good topic. You know, we actually touched on this principle before, but we didn't tie it into polygyny. And so that's what we're doing. We're connecting the same a principle that we did cover before. I believe it was during the summertime. But we're gonna we're gonna tie that into polygamy because, you know, it's one thing to talk about what we're gonna talk about tonight in terms of biblical masculinity, but it's another thing when we start talking about polygyny or polygamy. And so, um, so tonight's topic is what makes confidence for biblical polygamy. What makes confidence for biblical polygamy? So in thought of this particular topic, um, we're gonna delve into it like we usually do. We're gonna ask some questions. I got some videos for us to go through tonight, uh, make it a little bit more interesting than what we usually do. Hopefully we don't get no copyright strikes. (laughs) We're not monetized yet, so, you know. <laughs> uh, SWR says, "Would travel be a confidence booster in polygyny?" Oh yes, I'm sure. It would. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> because because yeah. everything would be cheaper. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> and 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 definitely certain destinations will boost up the confidence even more. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good question. Good question, SWR. Good question. <laughs> so, uh, well, to, to get it kicked off, what is confidence, guys? When you when it, you think of the word confidence, what does that mean to you? 
it means standing on business. Mm. Thinking on business, you said. No, a standing on business. Oh, standing on business. Okay, yeah. confidence is standing on business. Okay, okay, brother, brother, brother D. What comes to my mind is assurance, um, being able to um, stand on it, stand on your ground, basically. Not stand your ground like Florida law, but you know, standing on your <laughs> principles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and 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 that extends to you, brothers in the chat. Definitely. What does confidence mean? What does it mean to you? Or what does it mean? Uh, should we say? Yeah, you can definitely um, respond in with 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 your definition, and and you can even cheat. <laughs> you can Google if you'd like. Yeah, what, what does confidence mean? If you think of the word confidence, what does it mean? We can't because we can't begin to answer the question um, if we don't. We can't define the terms. Defining the terms is most of the way of answering the question. So what does the word confidence mean? Okay. All right. The answers are coming in. The answers are coming in. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, man, brother, man says it is having the fortitude to do what most are afraid of. Oh, I like that. I like that. What do you think about that, guys? Very having, solid. Yeah, that's a very yeah, solid. Having the fortitude yeah. to do yeah. what most are afraid of. Mm. The, the intestinal yeah. fortitude. I like that. The intestinal fortitude. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's like standing on an island on your own kind of thing. I yeah. mean, give, given the topic, I mean, you, you, you're talking about something that most men are afraid of. Yeah, I mean, it's true. Particularly, particularly in this culture. I mean, you can ask most men, and most men will be like, <laughs> No, nah, you know, especially you know, if they're married or especially they they're afraid. They are yeah. they are terrified. <laughs> you know, I yeah, go ahead, brother. Now I was gonna say I'm, I'm sure all of us men remember the first time we actually had the had the confidence to walk up and talk to a girl. You know, just basically to talk, right? Yeah. You say he, say hello. My name is Jay. <laughs> 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 or, or, or go after what you really want. You know, I, I, I'll go after what you really want. Confidence too. Yeah, Pursuing yeah. without ending. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Manilo says the ability to have trust in one's own capabilities. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I like that pretty good too. So you got to trust in your abilities, right? Trust in your abilities, right? I like that. I like that. And Brother Charles says, not needing approval from others. Mm. Okay. Yeah, because that's true. A lot of people, a lot of people it, find it difficult to proceed and uh, with without having uh, other people to push them or uh, encourage them or give them a boost. Like they they they're frightened to do things certain things on their own. So, but he's he's talking about having confidence without having the approval of others. Um, right. Not what you guys think approach. about that? Yeah. What, what, what do you? What, yeah. What, what do you mean? Like literally needing the approval of people. You know what it is? What is it to approve? You, to you don't approve, need permission. Uh, to, uh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. To get, yeah. To get permission. You don't need permission. Right. You don't. You don't need permission. You know. You know, my pastor said, and you know, my pastor said, you know, <laughs> and my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, SWR says, being yourself regardless of societal norms, obstacles. That's another that thing is, that yeah. can hit confidence. Yes, yes, definitely. That is um, definitely a strong aspect of it. A strong aspect of it, you know. Um, people, think about oftentimes how people, or just us in general, how we can be discouraged because. You know, we're going against a, a, a paradigm. We're going against the norm. We're going against, you know, a, a culture, a wave, right? Um, you and 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 what are the things? What are the things that you you think? What are the things that come to mind when you think of um, bucking against the culture or society? 
what comes to mind? Like, what, what, what will be the thoughts that you would say that would be hindering to a person? That would, uh, what would be some of the things that the society would shout in your mind that would hinder I, you? I would say confining to the different um, nouns or verbs and where to identify people when we know yep, yep. only Name one of them. Mm. Um, <laughs> you know, that would be one okay. of them. Um, basically, um, um, kneeling or bending to the to the famous alphabet. Mm, okay, yeah. there's a there's a ter- right. There's a there's two words in it, and it start with a P and a C, right? <laughs> Political correctness. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, it's the PC culture, it's the cancel culture, right? Um, where, uh, you know, you can get accused of bullying, right? Um, all of these are tactics that are often used to put a kink in someone's confidence. Uh, Aunt Manilo says, you're a pervert and a misogynist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's definitely... That's, that's a serious combination. <laughs> yeah. But um, um, when, when you ask them to define misogynist, then they, get, mm-hmm. then they ain't got time to talk about <laughs> Because most of them can't, right? So SWR said you're a phobic, dash phobic, <laughs> homophobic. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think that is the crazy. I think that's just like the craziest buzzword. Because who's afraid? I don't think they know mm-hmm. what that means. Because phobia <laughs> or phobic means to be afraid of something. You know, to be afraid of something. Like, who's afraid? And it's a clinical disagree. And it's a clinical diagnosis. So, you know, and I, I, when people, when people say that to me, so I say that to me, my response is often like, you know, are you a therapist? Are you a psychiatrist? You know, have you examined me? You know, are you, are you qualified to give me a diagnosis? You know, um, you know, so why are you calling me something that, you know, you're not even trained to to, to to give like how you're, you're not even an authority in this area but because exactly. i don't agree you automatically label me as being afraid you know, how about you just how about you're just afraid of of my perspective me having my perspective right. and me not agreeing with you <laughs> <laughs> because you know that your perspective doesn't align with reality and you think that right. your fantasy is going to become right. reality somehow <laughs> Yes. Yeah, he said they can't even explain it. He said, facts. I seen people say that and I'm like, ain't nobody scared of y'all. <laughs> I, I, I think the same thing. My favorite one uh was narcissistic, and I'm pretty sure you guys have heard this. Oh, that's a that's a new one now. Everybody using it. Everybody nobody everybody's nobody. narcissistic. And, and, and I'm like, <laughs> hey, okay, so this person was narcissistic. Do you have mm-hmm. proof that they were clinically diagnosed <laughs> from a professional? If not you know, you just going smoke, right? I would add this to, to what you say, brother Jeremy. I would say that, um, all of a sudden, everybody is now a, a psychologist. I guess we should be doing pretty much fantastic as a nation, right? And as the right. world right now, because everybody yeah. is right, is experts, experts, hey, hey, experts hey, without hey. studies, experts hey, without hey. studies, and without even research. Nothing, hey, brother D, stop gaslighting. Hey, I'm the rebel. I had to bring it back, man. That's, 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 a, that's, a, that's now nah, that's another that's another one, man. It's getting tired. It's gaslight. Stop gaslighting. Yeah, stop gaslighting. Gaslight. Yes, like, these are some buzzwords. But it, <laughs> these are the these are the most um these are the most drugged up psychologists I have ever seen. <laughs> Everybody is up. on drugs for some reason. I'm like, oh my, wow. <laughs> so what are you taking that one for? What are you taking that one for? <laughs> But they, but they feel like, hey, I, I can give other people advice. I'm like, man, you're not even in your right mind half the time. Right, 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 right. And you and 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 you're and you're going and you're going to give me a diagnosis, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, let's get a a, a clinician strategy on. No matter of fact, let's def- we still before we even go there, let me define the term from the dictionary. Um, let me present the screen.
Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Give me enlarge it a little bit just so we can. All right. You guys can see that? Yes, sir. That's, All right. So yeah, confidence. Yeah. Hey, this is Cambridge Dictionary, and it is the quality of being certain of your abilities and or of having trust in people, plans, or the future. Uh, for instance, an example um, a sentence would be, he has the confidence to walk into a room of strangers and immediately start a conversation. She's completely lacking in confidence. I have every complete uh, confidence in her. She, she'll be perfect for the job. So when we think of the word confidence, it often entails the future or right. the unknown, right? When we're talking about confidence. But there's something interesting about the word um, confidence. Any of you guys know uh, what the root word of confidence is? Con? No, con, con would be the prefix. Or is it confide? No, con is the is 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 the, is the prefix, right? Mm -hmm. Um, somebody somebody just gave it gave it. Um, I said the same thing. He said, he said he said confide. <laughs> he said confide. No, con. Remember, con is the prefix. That's right. a word in and of itself. That means to be with. Mm -hmm. But the word fide comes from a Latin word. Let's look at the etymology of the word. Let's look at the etymology of the word. It's a Latin word. And let me pull that up. Here we go. All right. Uh, okay. So I got. I need to. I need to enlarge it. I need to enlarge it. Let me see. Hold on a second. Okay. There we go. All right. So the etymology of the word confident is um, it is circa around fourteen hundred. Um, uh, and it is assurance or belief in the goodwill, veracity, etc., of another. So when you have confidence in someone, you have the assurance, right, right, mm -hmm. or belief in the goodwill or the veracity of that other person, right. It's from the old English confidence, or directly from the Latin confid confidentia, from confidentum nominative confidence firmly trusting bold somebody talked about earlier about not needing the approval right right so bold is in this or um going against the norms uh going against the tide right not being afraid of the backlash of the culture so it's bold even if the whole world is against you that's more so bold but bold is a synonymous with the word confidence uh, present participle of confidence to have full trust or reliance from assimilated form or calm um, here perhaps in an intensive prefix c um so calm is the is the is the prefix right and mm -hmm. the fidere or fidere is to trust so the the root of the word is fideri or fide um or fidelis, which means to trust or to believe. That's the root of the word. So the, the beginning of the word is con, so it is to be with trust. Uh, so if a person is confident, they are with trust. So they're having trust they in are, themselves or trust in what they, they have trust in themselves or trust it is what they what is unknown to them, right? right. It's trusting what's unknown to them. What brings right. into into play of that um, is uh, mm -hmm. there's a brokerage company um, call call exactly that Fidelis that you mentioned. Yeah, Fidelis, exactly, correct. Exactly. Yeah, Fidelis that brings it exactly. all together. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So I want to look at the video. This is you guys. Have you seen my video? Um, I did on. The four types of grounds reveals four types of women for polygamy. Um, in that particular video, uh, there's a, a doctor 
um, who has a he has a he's a content creator. Uh, he's a psychologist, and um, his name is Ta- Dr. Tavern, and he um, did well. I used one of his videos for that particular um, video that I created, but in this one, he does one on three steps to becoming more confident. So I want us to take a look at him. Let me see. I'm Dr. Orion Taraban. And this can you is hear Psychax, it? Better living through psychology. Yep. Can you guys? Yeah, I can, yeah, I can hear it. Okay. I'm Dr. You, said? you, you can hear it? This is yeah, 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 we, we can, can hear it. it. We can hear it. We can okay, hear it. Okay, good. Okay, good. Great. Because I've been having trouble with and it. And it was just one simple thing that I wasn't doing, which is the reason why the sound wasn't going through. Okay. <laughs> living through psychology. That's right. And the topic of today's short talk is three steps to becoming more confident. So I'm going to begin by offering you my definition of confidence, which basically contains the blueprint that I mentioned in the title. Confidence is the consistent felt experience of success. I'll say that again. Confidence is the consistent felt experience of success. Let's break that down. Step one, you have to do it. I mean, that's the success part. If you can't do it, or if you haven't done it yet, How can you possibly feel realistically confident? So the first step is getting to the place where you can do it. This might mean learning new skills. This might mean practicing and rehearsing and training. This might mean investing time, energy, and money. This might mean whatever you need to do to get through the pain period as quickly and reliably as possible so that you can actually do the thing. Make sense? All right, so that's step one. All right, you guys get that? He's saying that there's a pain process that one has to pretty much build up within themselves to actually do the thing that they need to have the confidence in in order to have confidence. Correct. Right. Right. You guys agree with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. For some reason, I thought he said like there was money involved. But yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with you. You know what you said. Yeah. I, I think I think we could even give a quick example that um, that buildup of confidence when we're f- um, first young and trying to ask a girl out and the nervousness and stuff, trying to build up that, you know, that courage to finally just, you know, courage. be just yeah. another thing. Yeah. Right. 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 Exactly. Exactly. So what does he do? You know, he he, he talks in front of a mirror, you know, yeah. rehearsing yeah, his yeah. lines. What he going to say? <laughs> Yo, baby, dig. Uh, you know, I've been checking you, man, for some time now, and you know, exactly. I just want to know whether you and I can. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have the right cologne? You know. <laughs> or it'd be like coming up with some corny ones. Roses are red, and violets yeah. are yeah. blue. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I won't be alone Girl. if I stand next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, your eyes is like the sunshine in in the in the whatever. <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly what he'll be doing in front of the mirror. <laughs> Trying to figure and, it out. And then he goes and writes a note, fold it up and give it. <laughs> say yes or say yes or no. Say right. yes or no. Or you know, maybe. It, it, it reminds me of like when you watching a when you watching a show, a TV show or a movie. And you hear the person, you know, they talking about, you know, they they, they like real talking, real um, greasy and bold, and they threatening the person, and they like yeah. telling them off or whatnot. And then the camera comes back, and they in front of a mirror because they the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you thinking that they actually talking to the other person, somebody, but it actually they talking to a mirror the whole time. <laughs> I like when they do that shot. All right, so let's go to the second set, second step. However. Just being able to do it is not sufficient for the felt sense of confidence. You have to be able to do it consistently. That's the second step. You do it once, you might think, oh, that was just a fluke or who, I just got lucky. If you failed 90 times before you did it once, can you really trust that you'll be able to do it on demand in the future? So Mm. you have to do it over and over Mm. and over Mm. and over Mm. again so that Mm. all things being equal, you kind of can't not do it. Or at the Mm. very least, that you have an objectively better chance of doing it than not doing it. Got it? Right, right. Even this is not enough for the felt sense of confidence. 
For instance, I've worked with some. All right. So on this part right here, what is he saying? What do you gather? What he's saying? Repetition. So you gotta, you gotta again, you're going to. Right, over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. That builds up the courage. Or like if you if you're gonna be doing a speech, what are you gonna do? You're gonna you be rehearse it. Rehearse it over in front of a mirror. You'll be over and over and over again, right? right. You know, until looking you at what your up. facial expression. Exactly. Build up until, you until, until your until you your girl up. line. <laughs> until, until, you, what? until until your girl line becomes um natural. <laughs> right, right, right. Smooth and natural, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, when I actually, when I, when I create my videos, like I do that, like a lot of times I like for certain things to sound natural. Yeah. I might take a hundred, a hundred takes on an intro, you know, until I'm familiar with what it is that I'm saying. And I'll create it through the hundred takes. I said it so much. I know what I'm going to say when I get to each part. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I build up a confidence in doing so, you know, and it feels natural to me and it becomes like second nature, you yeah. know, and, and, and that's, I think that's the place that you want to be in this second step is you do repetition over and mm -hmm. over and over again, uh, to build up that confidence. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I, I take notes myself. I got, take a note. <laughs> I, man, I got like five notebooks for, for, for all these, all these YouTube videos. Cause I, I write it all down, man. Right, was, right, right, like right, said, man. Repetition and, and just making sure repetition. that you got it. Hey, brother repetition. Jeremy, not to not to cut you off or anything, but maybe you want to look into maybe like one of those kind of um, e e ink writers. It might save you a little bit on having so many books. You know, you might be able to like file it in more better for you. You know, just to organize a little bit. Just an mm, idea. Mm, mm, mm. Well, Was that like a? Please. a, a it's like a pen, but then it it, it yeah, it's like an e, it's a, like um, an ebook reader, yeah. But uh, you can write on, you can write, you can write oh, your okay. notes down, and it saves more of your your information. Kind of helps a tech little guy. bit, I guess. Yeah, it, it, it helps having a tech guy. Helps having a tech guy. Hey, right. I never heard of that. But thank yeah, you <laughs> yeah, that's a that's, that's a cool piece of technology, right? All right, so let's listen for the third step very high achieving folks who have all kinds of impressive accomplishments to their name. And some of these folks, paradoxically enough, do not feel very confident at all, despite all of their victories. And why might that be? Because these folks are so monomaniacally perfectionistic that mm. even if they're getting it right 99% of the time, they're laser focused on the 1% that they're getting wrong. As a consequence, that's all they see as they move through life. And so they end up feeling unfulfilled, insecure, and anxious in the midst of all of their success. This brings us to the third crucial step toward the felt sense of confidence. You have to take it in. And how do you do that? Well, every once in a while, you have to stop and you have to look back at how far you've come. You've got to really appreciate and acknowledge and emotionally spend time with the victories and the growth that you've achieved along the way. And to allow yourself to cultivate a justified sense of pride, to feel that as a consequence of your own efforts and your own perseverance, that you've actually arrived at something worthwhile. That's the final key component to feeling more confident. So you have to do it. You have to do it consistently. And you have to allow that to impact you emotionally. The consistent felt experience of success. What do you think? Remember to like. All right. So what do, what do you guys think of that? I definitely like it. Simple and straight mm -hmm. to the point. Right. Especially right. like the last step where he pointed out the monomaniacal. And that mm. is ever so true, man. Especially if we've never... If we never one had to do anything re repetitive, but also if we've uh, if we've never gotten out of our mm -hmm. own head, you know, we're always attacking ourselves for what we don't do right. Because right. oftentimes, right. you know, from our environment, which may be at home, that's kind of all we get, you know, until yeah. we get out in the real world and we build that confidence right. in ourselves to go out and uh, right. You know, I'm sorry, not confident, but we build the trust in ourselves to go out to be confident. 
Right. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it definitely it definitely is a shift in um, perspective in terms of that third part. It's definitely a shift in perspective where you focus more on the good of what you have done than focusing in on what ain't right. You know, um, that perfectionist mindset where, you know, what you've done, even though it might be good, you still are not satisfied because, you know, you you still looking for something that's just not right about it. Right. You know, and and really, you know, you really got to appreciate what you've done, what you what you've accomplished. Like when I think of in scripture, you have, um, you know, in, 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 in the God, in God Eden, you know, you have the man and the woman, they're blessed with abundance. All the trees they can eat from, all the trees is theirs. Right. So they are set up in a place of abundance. But what does the serpent come and do and gets the woman to focus on? The one thing that they that cannot they have. have. Yep. Right. So y'all put them in a the place of abundance. And rather than focusing on that abundance and being appreciative of the abundance, even within their perfect state, the kink in the armor was to focus on what they lacked or what she lacked and yeah. so yeah so you know what, what you guys think about that i i, I think she was uh monomaniacal <laughs> monomaniacal yes that's a pretty word there <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah mono, monomaniacal uh, another another scriptural um account that this reminds me of is crossing the red sea after crossing the rest, I'm, I'm, matter of fact, let me go to the text. Let me go to the text, and um, so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right, so what is it? Exodus 15 is at the end of crossing the Red Sea. Yeah, yeah. So let's go back to the previous chapter, right? There we go. So, 14. Yeah, 14. I want to read the last few verses and then go into the next chapter. Okay. Verse 28. Okay. All right. All right. You want to read it, Brother Jay? To 31, 28 to 31? Sure, sure, sure. Exodus 14, verse 28, 31. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen. Even Pharaoh's entire army that had gone into the sea after them, not even one of them remained. Mm -hmm. But the sons of verse 29, but the sons of Israel walked on dry land through the midst of the sea and the waters were like a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Verse 30, thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. 31, when Israel saw the great power which the Lord had used against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Okay, so stop. What happened right here? Sum it up. What Moses happened? In had, Moses had confidence in the Lord. But also the mm -hmm. children of Israel, after seeing Moses' confidence, had confidence in the Lord and in Moses. Right. Because in verse 27, right. he lifted up his hands. In part right. 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 So now, after all this occurred, the Egyptians, the Egyptians drown. Right. The last verse, when Israel saw the great power which Yahweh had used against the Egyptians, the people feared Yah, and they believed in Yahweh and His servant Moses. Right. So they're in awe right now. Right. Safe to say. Right. So now, yes, sir. where is Yahweh yep. taking them from here? Where Where is He taking them from here? Into the unknown. Because at this point, they don't know into where the going. unknown. Into and they don't know where they're going. Into the unknown. But what is it that he told them that they're believing in? The land of milk and honey. The land flowing of milk and honey. So he gave them a promise, right? Right. They don't know where this 
promised land flowing to milk and honey is, right? They just seen him do a great mighty work in defeating their enemy, right? Mm -hmm. And so now they're in awe, they're believing in Yahweh and they believe in Moshe, they believe in Moses, right? Right, yep. that's where they at right now, right? Okay, so right. the next chapter, check this out. In the next chapter, read um, read um, uh, the four verses here. All right, here. The, okay, Exodus mm -hmm. fifteen, verse one to four. No problem. Right. Then right. Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song to the Lord and said, "I will sing to the Lord." For he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. Verse 2, the Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will extol him. Verse 3, the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Verse 4, Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea, and the, cho and the choicest of his officers are drowned in the sea, in the Red okay. Sea. Okay, okay. So now, of course, the whole song goes further, but we don't necessarily have to read through all of that. But what what is the thing that they immediately do after being in awe, after seeing the Lord move in a mighty way, drowning their enemies, right? Mm -hmm. And they they now have belief in Him, and they have belief in His servant Moses, right? What is the immediately thing that they do right afterwards? Is they began to sing a song of praise. What was the song of praise about? What just happened? What what just happened? So here's here's the scriptural lesson here from chapter 14 into chapter 15. The lessons that we learn is one of the things that we should do is that when we see an accomplishment when we see the move of yahweh when we see him he allow us to do or to accomplish we need to stop and we need to praise that means that we should we need to be thankful specific we need to be thankful mm -hmm. for what he has allowed for us to do but we need to sing see like these guys right here mm-hmm mm-hmm Yes. Yes. Now why 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 do you guys think that this is significant? What's the because significance it's building of the go ahead, brother? Yeah, no, 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 go ahead. No, you I think you got it. Go no, I, I was gonna say it's it's building their confidence for them confidence. going into the unknown. But just like you just going said, uh, they're going into they, they got the promise, so they know where they're gonna end up. They just don't know how they're going to get there. How they're going to get to and where it's actually at? Because right. they ain't never been there. Because they've been in they've been in Egypt, Israel, all their lives. Yep, for hundred they years. There. They're Egyptians mm -hmm. <laughs> by nationality, you know. So for you know, so this generation ain't never been outside of it. They've been working the fields, and that's amazing. That's amazing. And they're coming, coming out of yeah, they're coming off a plantation mentality, right? Well, yes. There you go. <laughs> I, I, I was just gonna say that. I was gonna say that. Don't that sound like America right there? Yes. A whole bunch of people yes. has been in bondage. Yes. They officially yes. belong to this nation, but here's the yes. father saying, "I'm gonna rescue you and, and, and take you off to your land." Right, right, right. You know, kind of reminds me of what we talked about in the onset with with, with brother Rufus, dear brother Rufus. Yeah. You know, you know, being at this state of coming out of the bondage, mm -hmm. a Mental straight bondage. way right right now he seeks the face of yahweh he pray he praises him right um he's i've even heard him say he's thankful for being set free i've heard him say that on more than one occasion the wilderness Why? will do that to you and the wilderness will do that to you and the thing about it is is that where he goes from here he don't know <laughs> like he don't know he, he's stepping into the unknown but it's the confidence stepping, right it's the confidence right. that's putting it that's pushing him yes yes and then definitely seeing you know the rallying of the saints being around him 
you know, he being encouraged, you know, all the support that's pouring in. Yeah. Him being admonished, you know, mm -hmm. him being put on notice, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All of that, because he needs all of that. You know, he needs all of that. And, you know, right now he's at a stage where he's going into the unknown for the next chapter of his life. He doesn't know where he's actually going. Not in his fullest, right? He may have an idea, <laughs> you know, but, but yeah. All right. So, all right. So let's go to the next. For me, it pops yeah. in something, you know, it pops in uh, mm -hmm. how music can be used in such positive ways and also mm -hmm. to, to carry information. Because without mm -hmm. knowing, we, we sometimes are able to learn things much easier in a singing, in a singing pattern. And I think mm -hmm. we see this with small kids. When they're you right. know first pre-K, they teach a lot of things with them singing, and singing has a, a power of retaining information also, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. past mm -hmm. and things like that. Much easier sometimes than verbally. So exactly, that's music yeah. and and the dangers of it too. You know, yeah. When you use the opposite. Who here learned their ABCs without it being a song or nursery rhyme? You know, yeah. You know, I mean, I know that's how I learned it. That's how I remember it. You know, man, uh, yeah. I still sing that today. <laughs> <laughs> they indoctrinated you. I'm just kidding. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, brother Bandolo says I help teach Spanish that way. Yeah, just through singing it, right? Um, did you sing it when you sang the Spanish, brother Mano? Did you sing it like Julio Iglesias? <laughs> Mark Anthony, <laughs> you sing it like what? a colonizer, Gaylo? like a no. colonizer, like a Spaniard <laughs> colonizer. That's all you need to base it, brother. That's all you need to base it, right? Right. I'm trying What's to learn saying, two yes. languages right now, and I can't even get the base. Lol, nah. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, but yeah, definitely. That's a very good point, Brother D, that, you know, singing is one of those things that help us get cadence. It it gives us the rhythm. It helps us in our memory because we're storing stuff in our memory when we remember songs. You know, it's it's very powerful for learning things and, and storing it in the intellect. He said, I do listen to a little bit of Mark Anthony. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, he, he's a great singer, great artist. Yeah, but the um, recall is. the recall. What do you mean? Yeah, it's a, it's a type of memory recall. Uh, when you oh, memory call. Okay, is it is it, is it called yeah. cognitive? When you when, yeah. when you uh, when you associate, say, you say you listen to Mark Anthony, then you associate mm -hmm. that song with what you right. you know with what you learned. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Doctor Myron Golden says, um, business guru, coach, business coach, book guru. Um, speaker, sought out the speaker, um, former pastor. Um, yeah, he 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 teaches that everything that you have heard, seen, experienced in your life, you have never forgotten. You remember everything. It's not a matter of forgetting it. It's a matter of not knowing how to recall it. Uh, that's it's a matter good. of that's how good. to learn how to call because it's there. It's there yeah. because the the mind is is a hard drive, and you know it's a memory drive. So it it stores data, and it yep. never yep. once 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 it's uploaded, it, it never it's never washed away. It's just a matter of how do you recall it, right? Yeah, Mandela says music is greatly powerful in that way. Yes, it is. Very, oh, yeah. very, very powerful. And, and I, that, I don't, brings that, an, that brings another yeah. dangerous thing, though, that, that is um, yeah. to be able to store everything. It shows mm -hmm. the great importance that parenting comes into play at an early stage, yes. that foundation yes. the kids, you know? Yes. Because you always can recall, you know, as much as the, you know, the Christians in different kind of gathering settings were off, and their mm. teachings that pretty much gave us a lot of us that foundation to seek truth, you know. Right, exactly. Truth. That exactly. foundation exactly. would have looked that way. 
Exactly. Exactly. You you reminded me of my son. I don't know if I ever told you guys this story. All right, you know, my little toddler, you know, um, you know, he has all these toys. So he'll pull out all his toys. And I mean, the toys literally become carpet, furniture, everything. You know, we, we're walking around tripping over this, tripping over this, tripping over that, right? Because he can't yeah. just play with one thing. He gets something, he, you know, he pulls it out. He leaves it in the spot where he, you know, he takes it out. And then he goes and gets something else before, in a matter of moments, the whole floor, everything is filled up with his toys everywhere, right? So, of course, he got to clean it, right? You you know, yeah. you take it out, you play with it, you got to clean it. So I started the, the the Barney song with him. You know, clean up, clean up, everybody, clean, clean up, clean up. So he'll, he come clean, he's thinking clean up, clean up, everything. Now, of course, human nature kicks in, right? And then there's those times he does not want to clean up his toys. Right, so he's crying. He don't want to clean up. He know right after that it's probably time for bed. He don't want to clean up, right? So, I like this. Come on, let's clean up, clean up. I'm, you know, I'm starting the song off. So here he goes, clean up, clean up. Hey, the R and B um, boys, the man virgin. You know, yeah, he sound oh, like, no. nah, that's Bar that's Barney on the chain gang. Right. <laughs> Barney on the chain gang. Clean, sweet. <laughs> oh, oh man. man. Um, in his defense, though, man, I, I can tell you from experience, he's created a whole Marvel universe. Right, that's a whole universe he's created on the couch and on the floor. So it's it's got to be sad to you know to destroy that universe exactly. and then recreate it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because we just don't understand, right? <laughs> we well, just don't understand. What's that song yeah. that came out? Parents just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, brother, no limit says I believe that. Lol, I remember lows and the highs for sure. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, man, listen, that's my son. I believe I've been having lightning shoot <laughs> shooting through my foot lately. <laughs> wow. Yeah, man. man. Sure. Yeah, man. Yeah, he's, yeah. They be they be all over, man. And don't you know? It's and then you gotta clean it up before you turn the lights off. You can't. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. Don't. You turn them <laughs> lights off. You're gonna trip over something. You're gonna be yep. zoop. <laughs> Your feet gonna lift up in there. Yeah. Man, yeah. You, you be in a hospital. Be... Yeah. 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 He got trucks, everything, trains, trucks, tracks. <laughs> I remember. I, I, I had to. Te I had to teach my oldest. I said, "Look, son." Take out one toy at a time. <laughs> Don't take out. You got the transform. Take, take out one toy at a time. All right. So, all right. So now, what the scriptures say about confidence? What can you guys think of as the scripture says about confidence? Yeah. Oh, oh Manilow says Legos are lethal. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they are. They, they are from the FBI. <laughs> That's what they are. <laughs> He said the pain is devastating. Yeah, man, and a barefoot. Oh my goodness, yo. Yeah, that's. A, I think that's a way to get back at the parents too. You know, and put put some toys out there, make them step on it. Uh, so yeah. So what what the scriptures say about um, confidence that you guys can think of? What's the scripture that comes to mind about confidence? What's, give give me a scripture. Let's 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 look up a scripture on confidence. That comes to mind. Help me out. Brainstorm. Man, I, Let's brainstorm I, I, it. I, I got a feeling we're going to be in Proverbs. In Proverbs? I okay. Feeling, I got a feeling we're going to be in Proverbs. So, for the Lord shall be thy confidence. So, having confidence in the Lord, mm -hmm. and shall keep thy foot from, <laughs> from being taken. <laughs> we just talked so, about that. <laughs> Here, back to the foot. <laughs> right? Back to the foot. <laughs> What's it? What's the what's the what's the what's the scripture? What's the chapter right. verse? That one is a proverb. Proverbs three verse six, verse twenty six. I'm sorry. All right, all right. Yeah. So you want to read it? Yep. It says, "For the Lord will be your confidence, and will keep your foot from being caught." Will keep your foot from being being caught. All right. Let's look. Let's look up the word confidence here in the Hebrew. 
Confidence, confidence. Yes, we can. All right. All right, confidence. All right, so let's get the pronunciation of Strong's H, 3689. Kessel. 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 All right, Kessel. Y'all caught that? Kessel. Yep, mm -hmm. definitely. Man, Manilo laughing. <laughs> Stop laughing, Manilo. All right, so all right, so let's look at the definition of this word confidence. All right, so Proverbs three twenty six. Here we go. It's loins. Okay, so we know what loins are, right? Right. Stupidity and confidence in the late Hebrew. It doesn't really break it down, but these, if you go up here in the Strong's. Uh, it is trust is confidence, flank, folly, hope, loin, right? Whatever is loin. I don't know what they, if they're talking about loins in, in your bowels. I thought, I thought loins was like underwear. Like, yeah, man, look up loin. All right, so loins is the body part on both sides of the spine between the lowest of uh, false ribs and the hip bones right sound like you probably so was it diaphragm diaphragm area yeah yeah uh it's also the reason of the, i know that part the reason of the sexual organs especially mm -hmm. when regarded as a source of erotic pro procreative power right but aren't, aren't right. the kidneys down there too so we can, we can throw that up again. yeah I mean, abnormal era because he says from the lowest part of the um rib on down mm -hmm right so it would be the loins stomach area right will be the loins which makes sense because that's where your gut is at right yeah so if you want to have confidence you should have guts right? wait a minute so that's where intestinal fortitude come from intestinal now fortitude. It makes sense. <laughs> okay. intestinal fortitude for confidence right so it's confidence okay there we go. so for confidence okay so let's read the let's read the the, the, the verse again it is uh, for Yahweh will be your confidence. He will be your, your intestinal fortitude and will keep your foot from being caught. Hmm. Okay, so that is, a, that is a promise. To put your confidence in him, he'll keep your foot from being caught. That's right. He's going to help you avoid all the Legos. All the Legos. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all of the Legos. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. All right, so let's 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 Hebrews yeah, let's switch. Thirteen Hebrews, six yeah. didn't come to me. Hebrews thirteen six. Yeah. Okay, hold on a second. All right, you want to read it? And so we can confidently say, "The Lord is my helper; I would not fear. What can man do to me?" Okay, so now why would we confidently? Let's look at the verse before that. Remember, right, people, uh, First, context yeah. helps. So, you know, always read exactly. before and <laughs> yes. after, okay? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so verse five, read verse five into six, Brother D. Let me see. Um, make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself was said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. Right. So that he we said that so that mm -hmm. so that we confidently say the Lord is my helper, I would not be afraid. What will man can do to me? Right, right. So we can, we have that confidence based off of His promise, just like Israel. Right, they had the confidence to go into the unknown based on His promise of the land flowing with milk and honey. Right. You got it. Yeshua, right. Yeshua gave his Yeshua gave his disciples. Yeshua gave his disciples what promise that if you believe in me, you follow me, you will have eternal life, right? You believe yes, in me, you will never die, right? But nevertheless, when they were on the boat and the storm hit, right, they thought they were gonna die. Cause he was sleeping in the boat. Peacefully, <laughs> cold. He was Peacefully a cold sleeping. Man. <laughs> So for that moment, is it safe to say that they forgot the promise? Yeah, definitely. It, it, it's I can have confidence in saying that they forgot the promise. 
they forgot you have confidence in the fact that they could exactly so what does that say about the promise yahweh's promise the the lord's promise as it relates to confidence that it um i drew a blank i'm sorry um it, it says that You're, you're, you're repeatedly going to have to go through things in order to build your confidence up in him so that you can right. confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? Right, right, right. So confidence going into the unknown, having trust in an unknown and what Yahweh has promised, right, that he will never leave you nor forsake you, right? gives you the confidence to say Yahweh is my helper I will not be afraid and I think sometimes you can lose um that confidence you see it sometimes in basketball players or even baseball players or pitchers and lose mm -hmm. that confidence in you know the the pitching delivery or even right. the shooting and how to shoot properly right and they right. need to regain what? that to to be able to Brother D, what what comes in the way of an athlete having confidence? What is the what is the one thing that causes an athlete to not have confidence? Self doubt, internal self doubt, self -doubt. external self doubt, or uh, fear. What about the word fear? Yeah, you know he's, he's afraid yeah, that definitely. he's not going to be able to execute. You know, yeah. Um, not being able to sleep the night before the game, you know, he has some athletes vomit, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Before mm, the yeah. <laughs> the nerves, you know, I remember Mike Tyson years ago, you know, he was asked a question, you know, this was when Mike was his prime. He was destroying heavyweight fighters, like almost twice his size. Um, and they interviewed him and they asked him, they was like, well, Mike, you know, you go into the ring. Do you ever get afraid? He said, of course I'm afraid. Of course I get afraid. He said, if I'm not afraid, I don't fight. Afraid? Being afraid is my friend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, you, you know. You can't wait to put on your acting skills, right, <laughs> brother Mike? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was like, man, that's a good impression right there. <laughs> and fair use. Fair use on the accent, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, no, <laughs> but he but channeled the fear rather than allowing the fear to be a paralyzer, you know, something that paralyzed him, you know, in, to not go in and fight. Um, and it's what Word of the Sword Ministry says, yeah, even Kobe was <laughs> man of my Here we go again, that word. <laughs> he loved that word. Yeah, so, um, um, so this account, Joshua is given charge to take the stead of, of Moses. Moses is not going to go into the promised land. This is fast forward to, you know, when they just came through the Red Sea, right? Walking on dry land and got saved from the enemy. Now they're about to cross, but Moses can't go. So Yahweh raises up uh, Joshua to take Moses' place, right? And this is something that he commands him. Like this is a commandment he says here. He says in verse five, he says, no man will be able to, this is chapter one of Joshua, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you and, and I will not fail you or forsake you. There we go again, never leave you nor forsake you, right? That promise, there goes that promise, that inevitable promise, you know, that I'm gonna be with you and no man would be able to stand before you all the days of your life is what he promised right the next mm -hmm. verse this is what he commands be strong and courageous for you shall give this people possession of the land which i swore to their fathers to give them only be strong in other words don't be anything less than strong and very courageous be careful to do according to all the Torah, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. 
So what is he commanding him here? Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. And, and what to be not? What is he commanding them not to be? Anything, anything else but strong and courageous. Everything else, but, right? Because he says only be strong and very courageous, right? And so, how are they supposed to do it? Now, this is this goes into what the psychiatrist said in the video that we watched. He says, "This book of the Torah, this book of the law, shall not depart from your mouth." But you shall meditate on it day and night. Why? So that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. So the repetition of meditating in the law, what does the law says day and night, right? For what reason? So that you will be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. In other words, you will enter into the promised land. You will do all of the things that I promised that you would be able to do, right? And you will have success. And the next verse, he says, so so what is the what is the thing that they have to do? And that takes us to the second step that the psychiatrist said is repetition. Right. What's the repetition here? Repeating on the promises, repeating on the commandments, repeating on the charge, repeating on his laws, his statutes and commandments, right? Repeating on it over and over and over again, right? What is that going to do? That's going to help you build confidence. You want confidence in what the scripture says that you can have? And in this case, tonight, what's the subject, guys? You want confidence, right? You want confidence yeah, in not. for biblical religion? What's, what, mm -hmm. what's, 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 what's the blueprint here? What's the blueprint Luke. according to uh, uh, the text on the screen? According to the text, it's uh, only be strong and very courageous. Only be strong and very. That's the commandment. But what's 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 the what's the strategy? What's the method of uh, walking into that? Repetition. Repetition of focusing what? on focusing on the word. Focusing on the word. How, how often? Day and night. Day and night. Uh, in order to do what? Careful you know, to, to do confidence. all that is written in. So in other words, when you do every you 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 repetitiously meditate on it day and night, in order to do everything that it says, then you'll be successful. So the success comes from the meditation, right? Day mm -hmm. and night, right? Right to observe everything that it says, right? That you've meditated on, memorized, right? So you have to get this word of biblical polygyny inside you. It's gonna help you build up your confidence. It's gonna help you to observe everything that he says in his law concerning it and everything else. Because you can't just read the laws about polygyny. You got to also read the laws about covetousness. You got to mm -hmm. read the laws about idolatry. You got to read right. the laws about um, loving your neighbor as yourself, right? Yep. Or you can end up like a pastor Dow, right? <laughs> so <laughs> in order to be successful, you got to build yourself up with the repetition of what the word says. That's the point here. That's the point. Somebody made a comment. Uh uh, John M says, I like what most with Job uh, 4 6 says about confidence. All right, let's go there. Let's go there. Let's 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 see. Yep. Hold on. Before we go there, let's go to just read this last verse here. The last verse and the ninth verse is Have I not command you to be strong and courageous? Do not tremble or be dismayed. So, in other words, they're commanded to be confident and they're commanded to not be a punk. They're commanded to be confident and they're commanded at the same time not to be a punk. So when it comes to making comp being confident for biblical polygyny, uh, you gotta be strong. Yeah, you gotta be courageous. You gotta be and a you, tree you, planted you by the river. And you can't be no punk about it. You can't. 
You can't. Let's let's go to Brother John. I know this. I know this one has nothing to do with the discussion, but for some reason, when you said "Don't be a punk," it reminds mm -hmm. me of our old TV show, Punky Brewster. <laughs> Punky Brewster. <laughs> Punky Brewster. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my, my my little siblings used to watch that. All right, so uh, so Joe four six says, "Is not your fear of Yahweh your confidence mm. and the integrity of your ways your hope?" Mm. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that is that, that, that is that, that I like that. I see why you like it, uh, brother John. Okay, so is not the what is the fear of Yahweh? What's the fear of Yahweh? Come on, type it in, brother John. What's the fear of, top of Yahweh? It's the beginning of wisdom. Yeah, but what is the fear of Yah? What is the fear of Yahweh? The fear question. of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. It is the beginning of wisdom. But what is the fear of Yahweh? It is the respect for His laws. It's the respect for His laws and the respect for Him. It's the reverence. Let's highlight the word. Yeah, definitely. What's coming with that? You got it. Is it is the reverence. It is the reverence. It's the reverence. That's what fear means. It's it's the reverence him. So when you reverence him, right? You respect mm -hmm. him. You do what all of the things that he tells you to do, like in a previous um, scripture, right? Uh, it is also knowing. He says here is to know knowing his instructions. That's why you got to meditate on all of them. So you got to be proficient in the word if you're going to build up your confidence as a biblical polygynist. You have you 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 have to you have to master meditating in his word day and night. When you get up in the morning, you you meditate on a few verses. When you get in the bed at night, if you're not doing any deep study, meditate on a few verses. So you you're feasting on this word morning and night morning and night and this is a daily regimen especially the scriptures as it relates to polygyny and as a plug my free ebook right <laughs> uh biblical polygyny or uh, biblical polygamy um a scriptural list right by michael allen or mike allen right it's a free ebook i will supply the link in the description box below uh so just go and get you a copy if you haven't gotten yourself a copy, share with one of your friends and one of your buddies, and definitely, um, you know, learn those scriptures, meditate on those scriptures. It's all in a PDF form, twenty-four pages, you know, of of a wealth of knowledge of those who practice polygyny, as well as certain principles and passages as it relates, some doctrines relate to polygyny. Um, so, quick read, so a resource, guys. Um, he says. Even when your friends put you down and doubt you like Job, exactly. Because your friends would be like, What you why you want why you want to have another woman? Your woman is definitely gonna say that. Why you want to have another woman? <laughs> it's definitely gonna say that, right? All right. So let's go to the um one question though. Part. Do you, yes, do you sir, feel yes. that do you feel that um the the lack of reverence by a lot of pastors nowadays, that's the reason they exalt themselves um over over the lord himself at this moment like of so many of them yeah that's what really comes well, to my mind just well reading i mean that. it's interesting that you bring that up but there's a connection with preachers the church the institutions exalting themselves in the place of yahweh um that is not supposed to be because as we know in the diagram um that it should be in the flow chart it should be yahweh messiah man and then his woman right yeah right, right nowhere in that flow chart is pastor church denomination right deacons <laughs> or whatever deacons whatever <laughs> right no no nowhere is that in there it's 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 a um yahweh messiah man and his woman and so uh you are to be the lord of your home you are to be the master of your home that's what the word husband means it means to be master and so preachers have created doctrines to interfere with that because they wanted the men to be subjected to them the men to be subjected to them rather than to the messiah 
they wanted to be an intermediary between that relationship and that's not supposed to be it's not supposed to be correct yeah definitely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay I, I i would i would add that it's really a fear um mm. but but it's not a fear of it's not a fear of of, of yawa though it, because they don't have confidence in him they have confidence in what they see not the unseen you know exactly exactly so, uh, exactly 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 all right so let's let's look at a legend i want to look at a legend we got another comment let me check the comment out uh oh we're as words as what uh you get the big piece of chicken lol <laughs> the preacher <Yeah>. right <laughs> yeah that's what happens man you get the big piece of chicken right kids be starving <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, this is uh, none other than um, a legend in the space of polygyny, but biblical polygyny, um, definitely on social media, on YouTube, um, Hondo Solomon. And this is his video. Many of you, you probably, Ooh, yeah. you probably have, you probably have watched this video yourself, but he actually did a video on how do you tell women you're polygynous or polygamous, uh, be it a woman that you just met, or you if you're already in a marriage or you're already in a relationship, this is the video that he created because he was getting questions from brothers asking, hey, you know, how do how do I spin that to my woman? How do I bring that up to my woman? How do I tell my woman what's the best, what's the best approach? What's the best way to do it? So in this video, he's answering that question. And so I want us to take a look at the at the legend right <laughs> and uh and see what he says here all right questions first um lately i've been getting the question of uh you know how do i how do i bring up polygyny to a woman who is interested in me or or a woman i'm interested in well guys it really just comes down to you doing it there's nothing else to it and then holding your ground. That means when you tell a woman that you believe in having multiple women, you believe in plural marriage or polygyny, uh, you believe in having concubines, which is hard for a lot of women to swallow, even those who support polygyny, then you know, if you tell them that you're going to have to just stick to it, stick to your guns, um, what I do, and I'll just tell you what I do, and I've had success with, uh, I'll say, 99% of the time, I find success telling women, hey, straight up, I'm going to have other women. Um, when I first meet a woman or she approaches me, I, and I rarely ever approach women. It's very rare I approach women. Um, they approach me. Um, I just say, hey, do you realize that I have other women? Because I do have other women. And I'm like, well, I can't do that. And then that's when I go into my usual spiel. Like, are you sure? Because you probably are already sharing men. There's not too many monogamous men around here. But I normally I don't even have to go through all that. Uh, most of women do understand. And seeing as how I'm kind of out there now, I'm writing a book on polygyny. It's called The Polygamous Papers. That'll be out in uh, in the spring, beginning of the spring, March or April. Um, a lot of people know that over the internet and, you know, people know that face to face out here. So the women know already, if they approach me, they're going to share me and their sex ain't that good. They're not that cute and they ain't that bad enough to change my mind on the matter because I'll just tell you what I do and I've had success with. All right, I, I want to pause on. I don't want to go too deep into it because he's he's covering a lot of nuggets. He's covering a lot of jewels, and I definitely want to get you guys' feedback. Um, uh, Shalom, brother Denzel. He says, uh, uh, "Great stream so far. I gotta make sure I catch the full play." Blessings to you, brother. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, in, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Brother Daniel, All right, you watching this video. Uh, shalom, brother. Shalom, brother. <laughs> yeah, brother Daniel. He can catch the replay. All right, so. Um, what do you guys think of what is it? What is it that Ahondo says in terms of how do you tell a woman that you are polygamous? 
Like he confidence. says, honesty is the best policy. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. That's, that's what I picked up too. Be honest and, 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 and stand on it. And be honest, honest and stand on it. Brother D? I think it's to be, um, I, I would say honesty, but also transparency with yourself and mm-hmm. being aware that, you know, that's what truly you want to do. And yeah. then you just um, convey that from the beginning and you be clear right. on that and stand on that. Right, right, right. One of the things that he says from the very beginning is he says, just do it. <laughs> um, because what, it, what by not doing it, what is the person doing that's not doing it? Based on what we've been talking about tonight. Well, based on what we're talking about, they, um, yeah, so they, what they don't have person, confidence in themselves. They don't have confidence. That's what they don't have. But what is it that they're not doing because they don't have the confidence? It's a one word that I'm thinking of. It starts with I would, C. I would, for me, I would say they're not standing in their, in their masculinity of, of standing for they're themselves. Not standing, standing, no yeah. doubt. No doubt. <laughs> because the woman is now dictating to them. Um, the, the parameters <laughs> of um, how they should engage or how they should move. Yeah, we got a troll in the building tonight, brother. No limits. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he says, "Show me." He says, "Show me the law that requires a man to tell a woman." <laughs> well, brother, if you go to the book of Proverbs, <laughs> God hates a lying tongue. So, you know. <laughs> Yeah, he's uh Manilo says there is none, not that I know of. I just believe it makes things easier. Yeah, well, no, I I think um uh no limits is joking on that one, Manilo. Um he's he's made he's basing on last week's stream when we were going at it last week. Uh he says there's no he's not in the law, right? He's just making a joke. Um but the thing that he says in the very beginning, he says just say it. Um, just just come out and say it, you know, because as long as you're not saying this is the thing that you're doing, you're procrastinating. And what is the what is the he said, ha ha, kid is saints, a kid is saints. <laughs> leave it up, leave, leave it up to Brother Ben, right? So, I mean, what is what what are you, what are you doing? You're not following the second step. Um, that the doctor talked about in the video. You're not putting into repetition. You're not putting into practice, right? You're not doing that. Uh, as long as you are procrastinating. And when you're procrastinating, there's something else that you're doing inside your mind. What, what, what is a person doing when they're, when they're procrastinating inside their mind? Is it my favorite word for the night? What's that? Oh, <laughs> they're being monomaniacal. Monomaniacal. At All this right. point, you need All to right. make it as a T-shirt. Right. Yeah, make it, yeah, yeah. Don't be monomaniacal. No doubt. Exactly, monomaniacal. Right. He said, "I feel like this." He, he said, I, "He says I feel like there's things that I need to work on before I move into it, but I truly believe that I need polygyny." Yeah, yeah. But the the thing the thing that yeah. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, brother. Well, I would, I would. You go ahead. I'll go after you. No, because I, I wanted to like take a focus on this word procrastination. So, if if we're procrastinating, what is it that we're not doing when we're procrastinating? It could be delaying the blessings that we that we can receive, or that mm-hmm. we have set for us to receive. Because we keep right. delaying and overthinking. Exactly. It's like it's exactly. like we self trying to convince ourselves right. that it's not truly right. what we want to do, but you know, uh, how the society will view it as we mentioned early in the beginning of the conversation. Okay. Going back to the early of the conversation, Yahweh gave a promise, right? A land mm-hmm. flowing of milk and honey, right? He also right. gave another promise in another passage that we went through in Proverbs. That I would never leave you nor forsake you, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So with these promises, what did the people do in response to those promises? They believed in him. They believed right. in his word. They believed in his prophet, right? They believed in him, especially when they seen him do a work, right? 
So when we're procrastinating, what are we doing to the promises of Yahweh that tells us that we 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 he blessed us and charged us to be fruitful and to multiply? What are we doing to the very words that he has promised to us? We doubt it on his word and on his we're promise. Doubting his word in his mind in our minds. Instead of meditating on what his word says, what are we meditating on? On the if and, 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 and we are delaying yes. the promise too. And we're delaying the promises, right? So we're, we're meditating on the ifs, we're meditating on how much it's not going to work, all a thousand and one ways it's not going to work. Uh, we, we're afraid of rejection, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, family, you know I'm not a family, I'm not high value, all these other extra, like all extra excuses, curriculum things, everything, yeah. right? All the mm -hmm. excuses because Hondo's going to touch on that too. All the excuses, right, is the things that we're focusing on. You know, we're focusing all of that negative chatter other than what his word, his laws, his statutes, his commandments, and his promises say. You know, and 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 that's why he says when you focus in on all those words, those commandments, those promises, those laws, those precepts, those judgments, those those ordinances, when you focus is on when you focus on all of that and you put it into practice, then you will have good success. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you get what I'm saying? And so how to build up that confidence is number one, I have to build up on what he says. Right, and then I have to put the do it in the, and you gotta put trust in the word. You, the word confidence. The root of the word is con is trust. So I have to build my trust up. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word of Yah. I think another thing what happens though is that people add that extra doubt in themselves is because at times they might meet this a specific woman and they really, I really want to have this one. It's like having your, your favorite toy and I really want to have that toy on my, you know, really want to have this woman. So I'm going to, I'm going to compromise myself. And when I'm going to compromise, I'm going to doubt myself and say, I don't really need this. I, I can do it one. Right. And right. that's where a lot of things come into place. You know, there's, an, there's another fear that we nobody's has really touched on tonight. What is a fear that a man has of telling his woman that he wants another woman? The, the fear of losing it. Or losing that yeah, family. Losing I would say abandonment. Yeah. Yes, definitely. She, I yes, agree with brother. Abandonment. She's going to take the backlash. Right, right, right. So there's that fear of losing it all. Right. Hmm. Let's go further. Hold on one second, uh, brother Mike. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, I wanted to add something to what to what Manilo said here. Mm -hmm. um, Sister Lily, in part two of a video that Pete Rambo did. Um, she 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 gave us an important nugget about polygyny, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't think most men. That, is that is that is that is that is that in the Patreon? Is that on no, the channel no. or is that on the page? That's on the Patreon. It, it, it's, it's it's on YouTube. Oh, okay, so he, he has he got, access. I don't know whether I don't know if he's a Patreon member. Yeah. Okay. Oh he, yeah yeah he's got part one and part two on on YouTube. Mm -hmm. for everybody go see. So if you haven't seen it, go to Pete brother Pete Rambo's channel and check out part one and part two where he sits with his two wives. But his second one, Lily said that um, when men are looking for polygyny, you got to first start by asking yourself, why do you want it? Yes. Do you yes. just want, do you just want it because it's another woman? Yes. If so you're looking yes. for it for the wrong reasons, man. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that's just about for anything that is great. Anything that has value, anything that is in the unknown, anything that you, you're going to likely have to overcome many obstacles, right? Anything that's worth having. Yeah. Uh, the, your why, the reason why you want it has to be far greater than a the shallow reason. reason yeah. Right. So, you know, it's like, okay. I want to start this business because I want to be able to buy me a Benz. You just want to buy a Benz, right? You know, and because in having this business, like you know, 
that's the only reason why you want to start this business right so when the why the reason why you want to do it becomes greater than you because notice the promise that yahweh gives to israel notice the promise that yahweh gives to abraham the promise extends beyond them the generation that he's talking to yep the promise extends beyond you know just them being blessed he tells abraham i'm gonna bless you and you're gonna be a blessing to others through you all the nations of the world is going to be to be blessed or going to be blessed right so the promise extends beyond the person that he's given the promise to that's what makes it great and that's how our ambitions have to be the reason why we do something like polygyny it has to be greater than just pussy it right. has to be greater than just because you know i just want a variety mm -hmm. you know it has to be greater than i want you know the fellas to look at me and you know pat me on the back you know um it has to be greater than shallow reasons yeah but you, you know and, you, you can get a new one anywhere you, you can know. get a new one you yeah, now right you're way. right with that, brother Jeremy. During these days, is 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 easier than going to the grocery store and paying for. Yeah, paying for it's easy it. to come by. Easy to because, come by. You know, with these inflation, delivery. you know. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But, easy uh, to come by. Manolo says my father wants me to move before I take another woman. On, um, he believes it would make my wife's family angry with me. Now, well, that, that, um, you were on the recording last you were on the stream last night man on, on uh this channel on brother Pete's channel and you understand what patriarchy is so mm -hmm. your father's not wrong in that it, it makes sense because you're taking the woman and you're building your house so it, right it, it makes sense you know yeah leave him leave your father and mother right definitely um and join us he said i saw both those videos well he said he did see the videos with the wives right and uh, Brother Denzel says, what are some acceptable reasons as to why a man would want polygamy? That's a good question. What what are, that's a good question. What are some of the acceptable reasons, brothers, as to why, and even to you brothers on the panel, what are some of the reasons as to why a brother would want that? Well, to really, uh, I, I, uh, I'm, beyond, I'm beyond, I am honest, I hate questions like these because I, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like people are kind of looking for ammunition versus actually looking for themselves as to why it would fit for you because it honestly is not mm -hmm. for everybody. But mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it it goes beyond uh David and Solomon, but uh the, the primarily the primary thing about uh polygamy and building one's house is uh an, a the reason of nation, the reason of uh, of building a nation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and also to make sure that you, uh, and I know you guys hate this word, but community. Um, mm -hmm. You know that, that that's another that's another good reason. But you know, for the most part, yeah. things that you would have to find out why do you want that. And yeah. like I said, well, I people hate yeah. that. Like, yeah, I mean, another way of saying it is your own clan, your own yeah. tribe. You know, because that's a smaller, that's a smaller um, part of a nation. Right. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Say, um, mm -hmm. Who, who, what I, you say? I would say for for me, I would say, um, brother Denzel, it comes more to a to a personal view because everybody mm -hmm. has a different idea of how they would like to create and and go forward with their own kingdom and kingdom building. But I would say a good example of this, what we can see, um, even in society, look at um, a company as large as Walmart. Mm -hmm. um, a company as Johnson and Johnson, and um, at times you even see the commercial that says it's a family company. Can you imagine right. the 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 aspect of you having the opportunity to provide for your kids and they not being stressed after their studies or studying and being part of the company for generations right. to come, where they do not need to beg for no one for an opportunity. Right. The company right. itself is the family. Um, it's a legacy. It's a proudness they can look to, you know. I'm exactly. sure exactly. anytime a Johnson exactly. and Johnson joins that company, they say, Wow, my great grandparents built this. 
Mm -hmm. You know, yes. it's my job yes. to sustain it. So I yes. think that once you look at those two aspects of those two companies, you that's basically a great blueprint because a lot of people are not aware. Walmart is right. literally two two families coming together, basically creating what we mm -hmm. see as what we what we are now. Exactly. And that company's exactly. not going anywhere. It's just going to evolve going to anywhere. some other some, mm -hmm. to some other way. Yeah. Right. I mean, many generations removed are set. As even Hilton, result, even what has, Hilton's what we want to add the hotels, yeah. yeah. Yeah, what has been because of what has been built, many generations removed. But here's the thing. Uh you know, we are encouraged in scripture that a good man does what? Leaves an inheritance for his grandchildren. There you go. You know? So we want to be good. We want to be good men. Uh we want to fulfill his commandment to be fruitful and to multiply. Um, it is a blessing, unlike what is told in the generation today, where, you know, um, there are many who are fighting for a woman to have a right to choose to kill her baby. Right. Um, right. according to the, to, to the, to the God of scripture, right. Children are a blessing from Yahweh. Right. Sure. <laughs> um, and it's definitely a blessing for a man who has a quiver that is full. Um, it's definitely when you got a whole lot <laughs> of children. That's a mm -hmm. blessing in the eyes of Yahweh, unlike the perspective of what this world says about children. And so, you know, it, it it is like Brother Jeremy said, it's about building a nation. It's about building a legacy. It's about fortifying, fortifying um, your legacy and fortifying wealth in, you know, the very first mention of rich in the scripture is where? Anybody can answer that question. What is the very first mention it, of rich? Is it Psalms or Proverbs? Nope. Hmm. The righteous father of the faith, Abraham. Uh, Genesis 12 says, and Abraham oh. was very rich. <laughs> right. right. He was very yet. rich. So, it didn't just it didn't, it didn't just describe that he was rich. It describes that he was very rich. When is the first mention of gold? When is right the first right mention right of gold? Nope. The very first mention of gold is in the Garden of Eden. Really? Yes. Why would Yahweh tell us about gold? Oh, okay. Because it's a precious because resource? He's, because he's a God of opulence. He's a God of abundance. Um, he knew that this would be a precious resource and a mineral uh to his people you know it's with from... everything that it's with everything that he's created so when he when he blessed the man and the woman and he commands he charges them to be fruitful and to multiply multiply means excessive we are commanded to be excessive oh and wow the no, land of pure gold. And, and and yeah you see it right and so and and so the 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 when a man only has one woman he can only add to his legacy but when he has multiple women he's now multiplying to his legacy because mm -hmm. having one wife is only linear she can only have one child at a time unless right. she has twins right Correct. but <clears throat> If he has two wives, right? He has three wives, right? He's now multiplying. He's now really fulfilling that commandment to be fruitful and to multiply. He's being excessive in his increase. He's filling the first blessing. Right. And so, you know, um, definitely this is this is this is the way of Yahweh for us. What comes to um, me that, also that's a that's I think that's more than enough reason, but go ahead, brother D. Yeah, what comes uh, also to me and when I mention gold, it comes um to the consistency because gold mm -hmm. is consistent, is is what it is. It's consistent, it's, it's consistent, sure, right? It's, yeah, sure. It's not like that fiat money we it's, have. Exactly. Right. It's not gonna deviate. And mm -hmm. it's a yeah, it's a standard. It's standard, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, exactly. and like how we say, I always like to say Masculine Monday, you know, the God works on the order and gold standard. There it is, you know? Yes. Consistency. Yes. 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 
Brother John M says, when I prayed about it, he says, y'all gave me two, Second Chronicles 24, 3 to 4. That's what Joash, right, was given to us. My reason being, verse 4, building the home, temple, house of Yah, Israel, the bride of Yeshua, etc. Yes. I mean, if that's your reason is to build the ministry, build family, build home. You know, those are the things that we're called to do. Those are the yep. things that we're called to do. The whole purpose of prescriptive monogamy, um, forbidding men to have multiple wives by the state, by the church, the whole purpose of that is to restrict man from being what Yah has given him the potential to be. That's the whole purpose of it. So when a man chooses biblical polygyny, he's choosing to take the shackles off. He's choosing to defy the chains that the enemy has um, instead him with. That's what he does. Um, he's, he says, hey, John, he says, interesting take. Manilo says, no, I don't live with my parents. He just thinks I need to move far from her family. Well, cool. if that's prudent, man, if that makes sense, it makes sense. Uh, uh, trying to be protective of me. I see it. I get it. Well, um, I can tell you from my personal experience, Brother Menelo, that that's not a bad idea. Um, yeah, especially yeah. if she doesn't know how to leave and cleave. And uh, you know, right. if she's a woman of the world, then mm -hmm. um, that, that'll be better. And, and, and you're not yes. cutting her off. You're just removing that influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. And um, yeah. So he says, what What do y'all think of that? Right. And yeah. So, yeah, that's what he you just said. it, Right. Brother Jeremy. So and uh, Denzel says, I keep out. Is there more context behind moving? Or yeah, is what he just said it. Um, and and then he says, I live on the same side of town as her family close by. All right. So he, he says, my father can be somewhat overprotective. He thinks they would retaliate against me. And uh, Key says, I understand his point, but I think he is in more fear of that than I am, okay? And uh, uh, Brother Denzel says, Brother Mike, that's a great point. Did a word study on the word robber to multiply. You can pretty much prove Yah's perfect will. <laughs> yep, indeed, indeed. I think I'm going to have to switch. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah I can I still hear you. Well, yeah, because yeah, I think my, my earpiece is going out on me. I'm going to have to probably put my headset on. Hold on a second. But yeah, guys, uh, you can keep talking. You was gonna, okay. One of you guys was going to make a point. Brother um, Manilo, um, you, know, you may think your father's being overprotective, but uh, really he's seeing what you don't see. Because you got to understand, he has everything, and not, not only does he have everything invested in you, but he had, he is a hundred percent in your favor in protecting you, even against things that you mm -hmm. don't see. But honestly, I would mm -hmm. going through what I went through with uh, both of my um, sons' mothers. Mm -hmm. I would tell, I would tell them the same. You know, their their mm -hmm. families or the influence that they decide to surround themselves with, it played a huge part in the downfall of our relationship. And had I had a father like you to tell me, hey, you know, I see you with your girl or whatnot, move away from that influence. Women are very susceptible to the influence of their surroundings. And honestly, left mm. their own devices, they choose the most negative influences for some odd reason of that. Mm. And to mm. uh, to truly go against and to truly be in rebellion to their head. So, you know, he's not yeah. telling you anything without alarm. So, Mike, right. so he's got to be seeing something that you're not seeing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Indeed. Definitely makes sense. You guys can continue talking. I'm um, I have to get my headset. My battery's running low. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can sit yeah. here. Yeah. Oh yeah, see, see, that's the thing right there. You, you just said it. Her, her, her family's very worldly. Mm -hmm. So, and and with, with that being said, man, um, you know, has she has? Are you guys married? Let me ask that first and foremost. Yeah. Well, I, never mind. 
none of you guys are married, but have you have you known her? As the word says, hmm. trying to be uh, trying to be PC on brother Mike. No, they've been, yeah, no, they been, no, they been married for a number of years. Oh, married. they have, they have. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah man, yeah. go ahead and separate. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. one thing yeah. I can tell you, man, is that it doesn't hurt. And like I said, from experience, I, I moved across the country uh, with my ex-wife, mm-hmm. and it was the best experience I had because mm-hmm. it showed me it showed me who I was as a man and what I can mm-hmm. be. Right. So, yeah, he said he's married almost six years. Oh, hey, congrats, man. Yeah, hey, congrats, yeah. brother. Man. Congrats, yeah, for that. yeah, yeah. He said, he said, I don't think he's incorrect, never disagreed with him. But yes, our family is very worldly. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, brother Denzel says, Man, I see the wisdom in what your father is saying. Moving or not is ultimately your decision, but I think what is even more important is that. You are teaching your wife and being and being main influence. Right? That's exactly. Um, washing with the word. That's the job. That's what yes, it sir. takes. Hey, sure. This is some good word coming out tonight, fellas. Some good go, word go coming ahead, out. Go ahead and sharpen. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Pour into her. Pour into her. Make her glorious. <laughs> Unto yourself. Make her glorious unto yourself. All right. Let's let's look. Let's listen to a little bit more to um. The master, Hondo. All right. So I say 99% of the time, I find success telling women, hey, straight up, I'm going to have other women. Um, when I first meet a woman or she approaches me, I, and I rarely ever approach women. It's very rare I approach women. Um, they approach me. Um, I just say, hey, do you realize that I have other women? Because I do have other women. And I'm like, well, I can't do that. And then that's when I go into my usual spiel. Like, are you sure? Because you probably are already sharing men. There's not too many monogamous men around here. But I normally I don't even have to go through all that. Uh, most of women do understand. And seeing as how I'm kind of out there now, I'm writing a book on polygyny. It's called The Polygamous Papers. That'll be out in uh, in the spring, beginning of the spring. March or April. Um, A lot of people know that over the internet. And, you know, people know that face to face out here. So the women know already. If they approach me, they're going to share me. And their sex ain't that good. They're not that cute. And they ain't that bad enough to change my mind on the matter. Because for me, this really is a lifestyle. You know, I have several women. And, you know, it's, it's really no problem. I don't have any issues. I've never had any issues with them um, wanting to um, want to cause beef and controversy. Um, so, you know, I don't know. Like, I'm a little baffled in this video. It's hard for me to answer, believe it or not, because I've never had problems with it. And a lot of you guys are hitting me up like, man, how do you do that, brother? You just got to say it. When you meet a woman, just tell her. It's that simple. Tell her. When she gives you this look like, whoa, I can't believe you out there, you being a dog. It's like, no, I'm not being a dog. Because women know that the best of men, whatever you ladies consider the best in men, you know that the best men generally attract multiple women. In fact, the most powerful men, period, whether they have position you know, their station in life, you know, whether they have money or whether they don't have money, those men, if they're men of high character, they have uh, a high mental, emotional, and spiritual stamina, physically, sexually, you're going to have a bunch of women. And that's just the bottom line. Men who are very comfortable with themselves in that regard, they don't worry about whether or not you don't want to kick it with them. Because, ladies, there's so many of you out here who are available. I'm not talking about married women. A man, women who got these boyfriends. That's that backward American nonsense, having a boyfriend. You know, grown men ain't boyfriends. Grown women ain't girlfriends. Ladies, you're either a concubine or you're a wife. Or you're not spoken for at all, which is bad. Okay? But anyway, there's so many of you out here, ladies, that you start giving a man attitude, you start popping off at the mouth, talking all outside of your neck raising your voice, you want to put your hands on her, 
we can go elsewhere. Even if you're a wife, I mean, really, if you really want to be evil and take that man's money, take his children, that's going to hurt him. Yes. But if he decides to stay with you, in other words, remain legally married to you and you're doing all of what I just said, trust me, he will have another woman. Make no mistake about it. He will have another woman. Now, guys, what I recommend to you is before you get married to a woman, even if you are courting her at the time where she's just your girlfriend, <laughs> you need to tell her, look, we're 30 years old, we're 35, we're 25, we're 40 years old, whatever. I'm not going to be monogamous the rest of my life. You know, somewhere down the line, I'm going to want another woman. And guys, if you like a certain woman at your job, you know, maybe she's the male lady or something. I don't know. You need to you need to tell your woman, tell your um, tell your fiance, uh, tell your so-called girlfriend, tell your wife. You're going to have to be honest with them and stand your ground. Guys, do not budge on the matter. See, women, let me put y'all hit the game on something. Women are very intuitive. They can smell a weak man a mile away. So if you act weak and you present something to her, but you you shaking and she can sense your emotions, you shaking in your body because you're afraid she might divorce you or she might leave you. If y'all ain't married, especially, man, don't even worry about it. I don't care how long you've been dating her. It don't matter if you've been together five years. Shoot, there's plenty of other women, probably better than her out there. And you sitting up here scared of one woman. Dude, you need to man up. I'm telling you. After, this is one reason why I've started to hang around the past couple of years more African and Caribbean men and women because they ain't soft. They ain't soft. They don't play that. You know, I don't play that either. I wish a woman would tell me she's going to leave me because she don't want to be my woman. Okay, leave. Shoot. <laughs> it's like five more women. <laughs> The ratio of men of women to men in this country, God, on the low end is two to one in some places. On the high end, you got 15 to one. You know, um, when I was going to college in Atlanta, um, I was actually in an area where the ratio was 17 women to one man. And that was just total. And of course, most college age, you know, people 18 to 23, 24, they're not married. OK, so let's assume that we take off two women out of that ratio. So you're still talking about 15 to one ratio. Now, all four years I was in college in that general vicinity of Atlanta, Georgia, the ratio remained the same. It was 17 to one. That's a lot. Dudes was picking and choosing who they wanted to. We wasn't worried about women rejecting us. I mean, I wasn't even focused on women in college. I was playing basketball, working and going to class. I had like a 3.0 in college. I mean, that ain't great, but you know, I wasn't focused on women. So, you know, I um, I had a chance to just sit and observe and learn game by watching women. When you want to know about women, just go and talk with women. Just observe women. That's all you got to do. You don't got to get caught up with them. And you got to, you know, go having sex with every woman that you meet. And all. You don't got to do all that. If you ain't trying to keep these women on board, you know, in a family setting, whether she's a concubine or a wife, then... Don't sweat it. You know what I'm saying? If they don't want to be with you because you want multiple women, you want plural marriage or polygyny, man, don't even worry about it, bro. I'm telling you, there's so many women out here. There's so many women. And you know what? I have found in my own experience and all of my friends attract multiple women. In fact, all but one of my male friends, they, um, they all got multiple women. They all got concubines or a wife and concubines or they have, you know, multiple wives, all of them, except that one. And even that one for like almost 10 years, he's had to fight off women who knew he was married. But he kept saying, no, nah, I'm spoken for. I'm engaged. I'm married. I mean, the whole way through. OK, and this is a Caribbean brother, too. And if he's watching this video, he knows what I'm talking about. But that brother is strong, you know, but he does believe in um, in polygyny. Um, I'm going to stop it right there. Um, so wh what is it that you gather? What do you guys gather? Um, uh, Manilow says, 
he says the aura is different around African Caribbean men. Yeah, it is. And uh, he says they move on a simp. They move on that simp energy. <laughs> they don't move on that simp energy. Yeah. So what do you guys gather um, that Hondo is saying here in terms of confidence on a confidence level? What do you? What are some of the things that you notice that he's saying that connects with what we're talking about here tonight? What makes confidence for biblical polygamy? Or biblical policing. One, he's honest and upfront. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two, mm-hmm. he's not budging on it. He's not budging on it. Three, yeah. um, he's also going for it. And and you also see that uh, he he gave us a good example of how he uh, of how he kind of uh, how he practiced it by going out and actually seeing it in practice. So you know, by doing that repetitively. Mm-hmm. But he also told mm-hmm. us that yo, he he let him know from the get go, this is what you're right. coming into, and no, it ain't right. changing. Right, right, right. Anyone else notice anything that he says? Deep. Um, not, not definitely. I would add on to what um, Brother Jeremy said. Um, not being afraid um to to basically disclose and and stand for what he is. Mm-hmm. And this is me, and this is how I'm gonna move, and this is how I'm moving, and. You can either be part of it or choose not to be part of it. Either way, it's not going to affect me. It's not going to bother any aspect of me or change any beliefs I have in myself. And I'm just going to go forward. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so it's not, yeah, it's definitely, it's not going to um, diminish. The one thing that he, you know, um, he has his attitude, um, even to the point where he's willing to sacrifice it. The relationship, the marriage, you know, even the children, you know, um, the, when we when we look at the system of prescriptive monogamy, the policy of prescriptive monogamy, the laws that support prescriptive monogamy, they are designed to do just that: threaten us with our livelihood, threaten us with our children, our family. You know, that's what it does. The only way a slave could be free from the plantation is what, guys. For me, I would say not being afraid of the lasting of consequences that comes with it. Yes, yes, because if they're afraid of the consequences, what will they never do? I'm definitely still staying and picking some cotton there, master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Denzel points out that a takeaway from um, Brother Hondo is the party most willing to walk away is is maintains the the preeminence this is true so if you're willing to not be afraid to walk away or allow them to walk away you maintain your balls you maintain your your nuts you maintain your preeminence you maintain your masculinity the the snipping away of your masculinity is tied in what your fear of losing all of the above and you know um you know it, it we don't realize oftentimes being so caught or we talked about you know being caught in a cult you know well prescriptive monogamy in a way is a cult right and we don't realize as men being raised in a system that conditions us to be afraid of the lashes as brother derek would say of you know losing our family losing our children right we don't realize how conditioned we have been and we don't realize how much we've been emasculated as men you know living in that 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 constant fear all the time you know if i move this way you know you're walking on eggshells if, if, if i say this or if i do this you know if i look you know uh, and this and it's constantly bombarding as a control mechanism uh manilo says when y'all told me to walk away more than once with different, I feel he's, he's different females, but I decided to be a simp. <laughs> he said he decided to be a simp. <laughs> uh, anything else you guys observe? I think I think yeah, sometimes, uh, brother Manila, what happens sometimes is not that you decide to maybe be a simp. It's just that um, you get into what we were discussing earlier. You double question yourself. And you place right. doubt in your head. 
And that's why he didn't move forward. Good, good observation. So what he's done, what he's done is he's continued to have the conversations in his head that defied or went against what y'all's word says that he can have. What he did was he had conversations of procrastination inside his head. What's, what's, what's your favorite word tonight, uh, Brother Jeremy? He had maniacal Jeremy. I think he stepped away. <laughs> Brother Jay. Ecclesiastic is um, 33.19. Let me pull that one up. Uh, Ecclesiastes. I'm going to have to do it on here. Yeah, he stepped away for a brief moment there. Oh, okay. Ecclesiastes 33. Okay, 33, 19 through 23. All right. He says, never, it reads, never as long as you live, give any power over you, whether son, wife, brother, or friend. Don't give your property to anyone. You might change your mind and have to ask for it back. As long as you have breath in your body, don't let anyone lead your life for you. It is better that your children be dependent on you than uh, uh, the other way around. Keep control over all that you do. Don't let anything stain your reputation. Wait until the last moment of your life when you are breathing your last and then divide your property among your ears. You know, it's interesting, you know, when we talk about the Apocrypha and we talk about these books that have been taken out of the 1611 King James um, that been in there, right? Yes, Aki says probably it's a very powerful passage, but the thing about it is very practical for maintaining masculinity, very practical for yeah. Um, being patriarchal and um, in in that realize the strategy 1563 the year 1563 1563 right uh, 15 that's brother Jeremy on a second oh okay yeah yeah to step away so in the year 1563 is when we get the the massive uh, prescriptive monogamy policy from the Catholic Church, right? Mandating that no man can have more than one wife, right? Wow, look at the common. Right? So now, 1611, right? You know, through the translations being made during that, that time, all in that time, 15th century, the 15th century, the 16th century, right? 16, 1611 is when we got that first edition of the King James, and it, it contained these books but as the conquest went further right beyond the roman catholic church and even the protestant churches that came out starting in the 1500s the 1600s and they started you know participating within the slave trade right they are the ones that took these books out books that encourage men to maintain their masculinity books that encourage men to not allow their strength to be taken or given to a woman or to anyone for that matter they took those books out which gave men practical instructions and this goes back to mm -hmm. the, the the earlier passage in joshua one if we meditate in his word day and night it's going to give us the confidence it's going to give us the instruction yeah. And if we observe to do those things, we're going to have success. So what 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 did the Protestant Church do? Remove passages, right? That the the average believer had, you know, um, in the prior centuries. Remove passages that contain vital information to maintain manhood. But it shows also how long they they sit down and the planning. And it also, it yes. also puts it in place something for us to, it brings back to even the question why we um, should look towards um, polygyny because it's, it's a consistent planning. These people, they're not, they're, we only look in a sense of 
a year, two years, or maybe three. Mm -hmm. They're looking from mm -hmm. now down, down 15, 10, 20, further right. down. And the only way we can right. really combat that situation is having our own personal kingdom, having our own families, our own our own kind of kingdom in itself and passing down those information to exactly. our to our ears. And, and that is the, you, and that is they'll the be commitment. ready. They'll be ready exactly. then for when they exactly. ready to do that. It'd be nothing new for them. They'll be ready and prepared. Exactly. 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 That is that is the commandment. This is a powerful it's a powerful passage. Um verse 19. Thank you um brother Denzel for for suggesting this one. It's a definitely a powerful passage. Uh, never, as long as you live, give anyone power over you, whether son, wife, brother, or friend. Don't give your property to anyone. You might change your mind and have to ask for it back. Sounds sounds like the folks that straight way. <laughs> you might have to ask for it back. As long as you have breath in your body, don't let anyone lead your life for you. It is better that your children be dependent on you than the other way around. Keep control over all that you do and don't let anything stain your reputation. Uh, and, it, and wait until the last moment of your life when you are breathing your last and then divide your property among your heirs. That's right. That's why the, the dividing of the property happened near the de deathbed. Um, for I would that say very the reason. part is reputation. Yeah. Sorry for cutting you yes. off, there, brother. Yes. But the reputation yes. part it rings a bell so strong because mm -hmm. so many times we see people in public or not in public. Um, the first mm -hmm. thing they do is they try to tear down your reputation or your character of who you right. are before they do anything. Exactly. Before they do exactly. anything. So that's exactly. real key right there, that reputation. And, and, and it just goes to show the need to um, be patriarchal and the need to build your own nation, your clan, your tribe, you know, build your own empire, right? Uh, so that you can be strengthened and you can be fortified. Um, Proverbs 31 uh, says this, uh, 31 verse one, two, two, three. And it says, the words of King Lemuel, the oracle which his mother taught him. Um, what, oh my son, on what, O son of my womb, and what, O son of my vows, do not give your strength to women or your ways to that which destroys kings. So anything that will take down a king um, will be consistent with giving one strength to a woman. So it, this is consistent with the Sirach passage that we read um, that Brother Denzel um, referenced, um, yeah, is, is that we, we, we are we are responsible we are mandated to maintain to be stewards over our strength and we are not to give it to others and that's exactly what i believe brother hondo was really basically communicating stand your ground even if even if you're being threatened or even if they take the children away yeah it's going to hurt but you're going to keep your manhood yeah you're not going to like it you know but you're going to maintain your your your, your manhood and you're going to be obeying what scripture teaches, what scripture commands, because these are commandments. You're going to be o obeying your head, your father, your master, right, in the process. So what are we saying here tonight, fellas? What are we saying here? I know Brother Jay stepped away. Um, what makes confidence for biblical polygamy? What are we saying here tonight? We can sum this all up. I would say it's the importance of standing in your principle, your character, who you are. Um, I would take from what we just read about reputation, keeping your reputation intact, being a man mm. of your word, being a stand-up person, mm. and also, you know, standing with what you're saying, being your word as your bond, as they like to say in the past, a very popular saying, we let your word be your bond. Stick yes. to what you say. Yep, yes, don't be don't, listen. Yes, don't 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 be afraid to lose. Correct. Don't don't be afraid to suffer loss. Don't be afraid to suffer loss because losing possession, losing family, losing property is is always been. Look what happened to Job. Job mm -hmm. suffered loss, right? Joseph suffered loss, right? Everything <laughs> but his missed, life. 
exactly you know but you but they maintain the integrity of their relationship with their creator yeah. and, that's, like and that's this, the key mm -hmm. they always like to say in sports is you don't look at the many losses you have had everybody looks at the wins you've had so never mm -hmm. look at the losses as you're losing it's just a new right. way of you learning to be able to be a king and win exactly 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 and even exactly. The, the scriptures that we kept focusing on tonight uh how many times you know did it say, you know, I will never forsake you. I, I, I will never leave you. Right. So, right. Right. You know, right. What, yeah, what do you because, hold? Go mm -hmm, ahead, brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. Because I'm just saying it's like in being faced with the temptation or the, the court, the thoughtful fear, the fearful thought of losing it all, being ostracized, having your children taken away, having your money taken away from you, losing your home. Right. Mm -hmm. the fear of all of that you know um it's a it's a matter of faith and confidence in his promise is what you have to stand on even in the realm of uncertainty yeah i tell this woman of mine that i want to have another woman i don't know how this conversation is going to end i don't know whether if i'm going to be having to move out or she going to move out or i'm gonna get she going to throw something at me. <laughs> you know, I'm going to get served with some court papers, right? Um, we're always being faced with fear to mm -hmm. cause us to not put our confidence or our trust in our yacht. Always. That's part of this walk. Do not, do not, let, the, do not let the pie, the apple pie, force you to <laughs> bend your knees. Yes. Do not yes. go forward to your purpose. <laughs> in your place exactly brother Denzel has uh some bars he says be willing to stand on business your business mm -hmm. even if it means he's standing alone never lose your preeminence <laughs> yes, sir. yes sir that's right that's right that's right and i'm gonna tell that's you right. man it's, it's, it's right. better on the other side it's better on the side it's better on the other side you never get there yeah, unless the... you had the confidence that i could go do it exactly yes 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 definitely definitely well men i think we um definitely covered a lot of ground i think we hit the points i think the needed points i think that we um um we definitely answered the question tonight um do we get anything out of this you guys in the chat did you get anything out of this tonight uh uh let me know let me get a one in the chat room <laughs> one uh, i, I did you get definitely got a lot out of it yeah, yeah. I put a one, one, one. So I put an eleven, yes. one, eleven. <laughs> <laughs> John said, "Thank you all for this discussion. It was inspirational. Hey, the inspiration is moved upon. Is based on the word. That's what we stand on. That's what we have to stand on." Brother Denzel gave a shout out a one. Yes, uh, and I think I'm gonna do the same thing. Let me shoot out a one. Let me shoot out a one. All right, there we go. <laughs> Shoot out a one. All right, good. Got my one. I'm digging in the word. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, so yeah, I, I enjoyed the talk. I enjoyed the talk. Um, and brother Charles, yes, with the one. All right, all right. Yes, it's word of, the word of the sword ministry. Shout out with a one. All right. Good. Bless, 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 bless. Yeah. So, any last remarks, guys? Um, stand on business, as the, on business. brother Dennis would say. Maintain your preeminence. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> Maintain your preeminence. He said, "Brother my Aki says I need things like this. That's why I brought up the subject regarding confidence. Honestly, I feel into a sort of regression as the years went on. Yeah, I mean it's." You, you always got to keep the information. That's why the meditating day and night is important. Keep going over these scriptures, going over these passages. Keep looking at Hondo. Keep looking at the videos. Keep talking to the right. brothers. You know, keep doing these things that's going to help motiv motivate you, continue to charge you, to ignite you. Because we're that's at fun. war. <laughs> we are at war, man. We are at war. He says, I, he said, need that iron talk. Indeed, that's why we're here, man. You know, to sharpen one another, strengthen one another, 
encourage mm-hmm. one another, lift each other up, you know, give us, give each other the push when we need it, right? You know, because procrastination, man, is a killer. Yeah, it's a killer. Definitely. You know, you start that conversation inside the head, and you talk about all the reasons why it's not going to work. You know, you focus on lack. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I would, you're not I would, really focusing I would, on the prosperity. I would say yeah. a great character that I love. I love taking like um, positive thing, biblical out of um, certain um, daily things. I would say, yes. brother Manalo, be like how um, the Green Lantern is. Always, always keep charging that lantern, that green ring, you know. That's right. Let it be that charger, right. you know. Let let the Bible, yeah. let the word be that green lantern. You know, sometimes you see when he's he doesn't have his energy, he has to charge up that green ring. Just always yes. be able to always be ready to use that lantern to charge yourself up. Yes, yes. Here we go again. That man o maniacal <laughs> thinking lol. <laughs> <laughs> Right. All right, I, get, I guess we'll have to do a topic. Make the t-shirt, make right, the t-shirt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of next week, yeah, next week we have Dr. Jan will be on with us. Um, let me see whether if I could pull the banner up. Um, nah, that's just that was last night. Um, let me go back to my photos library. All right, so we got Dr. Jan. Uh, this so if you didn't, oh, the fo- that photo is way back there. I'm not gonna be able to find that photo. This way back there, I can't. I won't. I won't be able to go. I won't be able to get it. But definitely, the link will be on the channel. This was the video. Um, oh, here it goes. I, I got it. All right. Nope, it's not coming up over there. Hold on a second. Try to pull it up over here. Here we go. You guys are there? Yeah, we have, yep, yep, yep. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, here we go. All right, so yeah, it was. All right. Um, let me see. I'm going to share the screen and try to get this up. Um, All right, here we go. Uh, now I'm gonna have to do it the other way. Do the window. Share screen. There we go, there we go. There we go, that's it, I <laughs> got it. All right, yeah, so yeah, this is uh, next week, the 22nd, it'll be 8 o'clock. Normally, we do our live streams at 9 o'clock, but it'll be at 8 o'clock. It'll be just Dr. Yan and myself, and we'll definitely endeavor to take questions afterwards, and this is part two of what we did back in the the 5th of February. Um, He had a new addition to the family. He had a baby that was born, a little girl that was born um, in between that time. And that's the reason why we're just getting to do part two um, next week. So it, the topic, the theme is on men's health, ro- uh, men's health, um, uh, men's health, um, stamina and building family structure. And uh, we're going to finish up the outline that we started the last time. He definitely dropped some jewels, you know, in terms of um, work, walking and how much it does for your testosterone and builds up your stamina, uh, things I didn't even know, especially for just walking, just taking a walk, like 10, 10 15 minutes of walk a day um, uh, can build up your stamina as a man, you know? And that's very important. We're talking about biblical polygamy. We definitely gotta be able to um, fit the bill. <laughs> you know, we won't be able to fit the bill if um, the equipment ain't working right. So definitely um, we gotta keep it up. So with that said, that's another uh, teacher right there. Keep it up. Yeah, that's another, <laughs> keep it up, right? <laughs> keep it up. Biblical polygamy requires you keep it up. <laughs> All right. So, uh, brother D, could you close us out in a word of prayer? So I can. Thank you, brothers, for everybody who, who added addition to the questions and the discussions we had today. 
Lord, give us that confidence, that strength to be able to walk with you, to be known that the words that you wrote in heaven are already, already set, that we can confide in you, that we have you to protect us, and the earth to put on that armor that we always prepared and that we can go forward and do the words and do what we can do and go even deal with all these crazy things that have families not following us, good friends that we grew up with, and us now trying to change our ways and try to walk more in your way. Give us that confidence, give us that strength, and that we meet again on Monday, Masculine Monday again, and that we help the brothers and that someone hears this and it touches their heart and they can change from whatever way they're going because it's never late to change. In your name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. All right. Amen. Good, good. This was blessed. This was blessed. This was blessed. Well, grateful guys. I thank you, all you brothers in the chat um, who came in and got into the discussion tonight in the comments. Um, Brother Charles, Denzel, Aki, of course, Manilo, uh, the Word of the Sword Ministry. Um, and that was earlier on. That was um, Brother um, No Limits. And the other one was SWR earlier. Yeah. And man earlier, brother man. Yeah, all of you brothers. And if I missed any names, you know, don't don't hate me. Uh, but <laughs> we enjoyed you guys tonight. Definitely got I had a good um spirited discussion. We definitely hit on a uh, key principles tonight. And uh definitely um look at the stream all over again and do share the link with others. And definitely look out for uh, next week, Monday night, as well as this coming Shabbat. Uh, we will be um, uh, doing a new topic um, for the for that particular stream to be announced during the week. And so with that said, uh, for King and Kingdom, we bid you shalom. Until the next time, take care, brothers. Shalom, shalom. Keep, shalom. Digging, keep digging in the word.